here at Harder Stadium, but Santa Barbara had done enough during the regular season to be a, a number 15 seed. Three teams from the Big West last season went to the NCAA. This year, one team is going to go, and that's going to be the conference tournament champion because the, the league was down a little bit this year. Yeah, the computer RPI wasn't quite good enough for the league this year. Actually, the whole West was a little bit down, so it hurts the Big West when, when the whole West isn't, isn't doing that well because you know, they're all playing each other, and that's where the RPI comes from. So this is a must-win game tonight for the Gauchos, and if they win this, they're going to have to win again on Saturday night in the championship match to make the NSA tournament. But the good news is it's all right here. It all it will all be right here at Harder Stadium. Absolutely. So I, I don't think it's any great surprise, though, Mark, when you get to this time of the year, you're, you're talking about pressure because the NCAA tournament is win or go home anyway. So this is almost like a, a pre-NCAA tournament. You can look at it that way. Boy, and the Gouchers have had some pressure-packed games this year. You yeah. know, I mean, I'm harkening back even to some of the ones they lost at UCLA and Cal that were Cut, went down the last seconds of regulation, so they're used to the to the drama of it all, and and they had, they had a dramatic win against Cal State Fullerton down there earlier this year, winning in overtime on Kevin Foish's goal. So, yeah, the Gouchers are used to it, and uh, the good news is, um, you know, they've been here before. They certainly have. UCSB came into Big West Conference play this season bleeding goals. The Gauchos had lost five straight matches, and during that span, they had given up 17 goals. They've kind of fixed the defensive part of things, Mark, but over the last three matches, the Gauchos have scored just one goal. So Tim is concerned with that, certainly the offense. Well, in the UC Davis match, he told me that kind of felt they weren't they weren't trying to penetrate the box enough. He felt they were just trying to serve balls in and take advantage of their size with guys like Kevin Foyish and Nick DePew, where they have a little bit of size advantage, but it just wasn't working for them. So he wants their, their wingers maybe to penetrate a little more, try to create something, take a little bit of a risk. I think you're going to see the Gauchos pushing forward a lot more tonight, maybe than they have in the last few games. Well, they're is certainly the hope for UCSB tonight that they could get their talented freshman center back Daniel Amo back into the uh, uh, the fold mark uh, Amo went down in September with what looked like a serious season ending groin injury against UCLA then he came back and he re-injured that groin but they said that they thought they could have him by the postseason they think they can have him tonight he's been cleared to play it's really up to Daniel and up to Tim as to whether he does play tonight well that's such a tough injury because it can rear its ugly head pretty quickly you know you think you're fine you start running up and down the field soccer obviously there's a lot of running and it can flare up so i know it'll be in his head a little bit he's such a talented player he does so much for them he's versatile so he can plug him in in a lot of different places then in a tournament match he's really valuable and i know the gauchos are down a little bit in their numbers you know late here in the season they could really use daniel amo tonight one final thought, Mark, before we hear from Tim Von Stieg here on the San Inez Band of Chumash Indians pregame show. Titoan LaRue, the outstanding freshman goalkeeper from France, was injured during training last night. He, too, suffered what appears to be a, a fairly significant groin injury. Now, Jeremy Clark, the Gaucho's goalkeeper coach in his first year, he's been outstanding. Tim told me that it's Jeremy's decision. They're going to watch Titoan warm up tonight. If he can't do it, if he's not 100%, in Jeremy's eyes, he's not going to play. The Gauchos are so fortunate to have Brandon Burke because most teams don't have two goalies with that kind of skill, and Brandon's got great experience. Oh, yeah, he was a starter in past seasons, and, and I, was, I thought it was a great move by Tim Von Stieg to play him in that last match against UC Davis. I thought he played an outstanding match. He's a very physical and athletic goalkeeper, um, maybe even a little more physical than, than uh, Titoan LaRue. Um, Titoan obviously is a great, a great goalie in his own right, very technically sound. But Brandon's experienced, and he can do the job. So either way, I think the Gauchos are fine there. All right. So as I mentioned, I spoke to Tim Von Stieg earlier today as he got to the stadium and talked about this matchup tonight against Cal State Fullerton. And I started Tim off with all the success that he has had. This is his 18th year, 14 out of the last 15 years, Mark, they have been to the postseason, including this year. Well, he's so good, in my mind, in making adjustments. You know, that, I think that's where Tim really earns his keep. He's, uh, I think some, a lot of times in the past, I've noticed that the Gauchos have come out and after a halftime session with him and they'll figure some things out. He makes great much adjustments during the season. Nick DePew, a great example, a guy he converted from, from a defensive player into a, the nation's leading scorer last year. Fulton's got the same guy, you know, right. in Ohio. You know, he's a guy who is a defender now and he's the same, he's big, pretty big like Nick DePew. So George Koontz has, has a little bit of credentials on his side too. So it's going to be a great. A great chess match tonight between Absolutely. Fullerton and the Gauchos. Absolutely. Here are Tim's thoughts brought to you by the San Inez Band of Chumash Indians.
From Harder Stadium on the campus of UC Santa Barbara, this is the Big West Conference Tournament Semifinal. All right, well, we apologize uh, for the uh, sound problem there with uh, Coach Von Stig, but I'll uh, just give you a little uh, overview of what Tim said. It basically, he's uh, very pleased with his team, uh, the progress it has made over the years, and uh, he certainly is pleased with the fact that the Gauchos have won the uh, Big West Conference North Division for the fourth consecutive year with a 6-1-3 and three record. Uh, but, uh, Mark, as we talk about the Gauchos, and their outstanding season to this point, which has produced a 10, six and three uh, mark. You also have to look at Cal State Fullerton. When UCSB beat Fullerton two to one in overtime on October 1st, that was the last time Fullerton lost a match. They have gone eight in a row where they have either drawn or won. So they haven't tasted defeat since the Gauchos and Kevin Foish beat them in overtime uh, in Fullerton on October 1st. Uh, moreover, George Kuntz, <laughs> career-wise, and this includes at UC Irvine, is 4-0 against Tim Von Stieg in the postseason. So Tim is trying to end a personal losing streak to coach uh, George Kuntz, who has done an outstanding job at Fullerton, as he did at, at Irvine. And uh, Tim obviously trying to get to the postseason. We talked about in our stand-up uh, about uh, how this league, this Big West Conference, is down this season, and it's really uh, a one-team <coughs> bid for an NCAA tournament spot. Yeah, and if you don't think Tim knows that uh, George Koontz has beaten him in four straight <laughs> playoff games, and you better yeah. think again because <laughs> yeah. he does. And he's, he, Tim takes those kind of things personally, so I know he's really got his gauchos fired up tonight. And I think, you know, a big question, Jerry, to me would be, is it an advantage for Fulton to have played a first-round match in the Big West Tournament while the gauchos had a bye because you've got a little momentum going? You know, they won a dramatic penalty kick shootout. Uh against Davis the other night right. um, five they won the shootout five to three whereas the Gauchos are just kind of like you know do you lose your momentum do you lose your rhythm but I think Tim actually really wanted that bye because uh, his team's a little dinged up I know Josue Espana has been nursing all kinds of different nicks you know and and pains and bruises and and uh, just kind of gutted it through the last part of the season I think he I think Josue above all probably took good advantage of that time off and you know they're trying to get Daniel Amo back we'll see if he's going to play or not tonight right, right hope he does but a few other guys too have been a little banged up so I think it's good for the Gauchos it's they're gonna have to bring their A game tonight though because Fullerton as you know is, is a tough playoff team they always have been they always will be and um, and there's obviously a lot on the line tonight well there is a, a change with the UCSB uh uh, lineup tonight. Titouan LaRue, the Gauchos' outstanding uh, French goalkeeper, the freshman, was injured in practice in training last night, Mark, and he will not play in tonight's match. He injured his groin, so Brandon Burke, uh, Gauchos, uh, we talked about this in our interview, or in our, our stand-up, I beg your pardon, that you and I did. 
But Brandon Burke is so capable. He is not. He not only has experience as a starter over his first two years, but he also has experience in the postseason as a uh, as a starter. So they're in very capable hands. It's just a, a bad break for Tijuan Larue. But Brandon Burke, just an outstanding goalkeeper, uh, no question about it. Yeah, you know, I was really impressed in the UC Davis match. He hadn't played all season, um, just you know, in practice, and I thought he made some really quality saves in that match, first match of the season. So. As I mentioned in the post in the pregame show, I, I think the Gauchos are okay at goalkeeper. I don't think that's going to be an issue. They're both very good. It was going to be a battle at the beginning of the year between those two, but uh, but Brandon was hurt at the beginning of the year, exactly. And uh, so the, so Tijuan actually won won it by default. Now he earned it. By the way, he played early in the season. I think Tim realized, okay, we're going to we're going to go with Tijuan, even when Brandon did come back. So. I know there's been a lot of pressure on Brandon Burke tonight, but uh, I think he's up to the up to the task. And I do too. And I think you bring up a good point, Mark. He has seen and experienced the pressure before. It's not like you're talking about a freshman who's had limited minutes this season, who hasn't played a lot, uh, and 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 who has never played in a postseason match. Uh, Brandon Burke uh, has has done very well for himself, and most recently the UC Davis match stopped seven shots in the Gauchos' final regular season match, including a penalty kick. And I don't care what kind of setting you're in. You stop a penalty kick, you're getting it done. And, you know, another point about that, Jerry, is is that Brandon's very popular with his teammates. Usually when you bring in a, in a goalkeeper cold like that, there's a problem in the communication with your back line. That's big in, in college soccer, the communication between your goalkeeper and your center backs and your and the guys on the left and right. The right backs. But he, he is very close with those guys. They get along great. I think the communication is going to be just fine between between those guys. And I do, too, as well. Ladies and gentlemen, here is our national anthem as the Titans and Gauchos have been introduced. Very nice rendition of the National Anthem here, brought to you by our friends at Montecito Bank of Trust. Montecito Bank of Trust, a proud sponsor of the Gauchos. You all strapped in, generally. These are always fun when the Gauchos and, and Fullerton get together. And, and uh, the, the two teams, uh, I know, have a great deal of respect for each other. I know George and, and Tim uh, have quite their own little rivalry going. Not little. They're both big guys, and they're both <laughs> successful. But um, it, it's, it's fun when, when it's that time of the season and it's meaningful. And uh, there's nothing more meaningful than this game tonight for these two teams because the Big West Conference, RPI-wise, and that's ratings percentage index, that's how they measure the NCAA does for at-large berths and whatnot uh, into the NCAA tournament, there's only one team that's going to come out of this one this year, and that's the one that wins on Saturday in the championship game. If the Gauchos win, they'll host Northridge or Sacramento State. If Fullerton wins, then... Uh, and, and Northridge wins, and Northridge would win, and if Fuller uh, would host, and if Fullerton and Sac State win, don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got it right. <laughs> I was following you along right uh, there. All right, beautiful. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, the, the thing about uh, Cal State Fullerton, when you, you look at this team uh, this season, they are led by Alex Heilman, who has 11 goals, Mark, and 24 points. I mean, my goodness. The Gauchos are led by uh, Kevin Foish, who has uh, a total of 10 goals this season. 
But Heilman, as you mentioned during our pregame, is a converted uh, uh, corner. Uh, he's a converted converted center back. Yeah, beg your pardon. And <laughs> as a center back, he's done a lot of his scoring with his head. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's like what six foot three, two hundred pounds. He's very strong. He's very experienced. He's a senior. He's one one of the leaders of this Titans team. Uh, he's going to be a load in the box for the Gauchos, and they're going to definitely going to have to mark him closely. Just as Cal State Fulton is going to have to mark uh, Nick DePew very closely. I know Nick. Nick really wants a big postseason. Yep. You know he's this is his last one as a senior. He's a senior, and you know he's had a lot of balls hit wood this season. Mm-hmm. He's had a lot hit the crossbar. He's had a lot hit the post, and uh, he, he almost feels maybe a little bit, a little bit jinxed. And it's a new season right now. Everybody's zero and zero, and the slate's clean. I think Nick is just really primed for this for a playoff run here and it's do or die every time he takes the field so you know he's going to give it his all he certainly is so the gauchos are out on the field right now and uh, they are to our right and cal state fullerton is huddled up and ready to go the titans nine eight and four david rodriguez elias will be in goal he's a big guy and he's a very good goalkeeper six two 185 pound senior from huntington beach and he certainly doesn't want this to be his final game Corentin Ullman is a defender in front of him. We mentioned Alex Heilman, 6'3", 200-pounder. Heilman with the 11 goals this season. Ruben Alvarez, talented midfielder. Robert Coronado in the midfield as well. Ronaldo Pineda is a midfielder. Ross McPhee, a midfielder. Nicolo Diamato is a midfielder. Ricardo Cor- uh, Corvarubias is a defender. Michael Lopez, a defender. And Ray Dorrit is a forward at five foot nine for Fullerton in white moving from left to right. The Gauchos along the back line have Randy Mendoza at left back, Josue Salgado at left center back, Jeff Quesada at right center back, Andy Perez is playing as the right back. In front of them is uh, number eight right there. You see Lamar Batista in the midfield, also in the midfield for UCSB. Actually, let me correct myself, Dalton Pando is playing as a right back. Andy Perez is in the midfield along with Kevin Foish and Josue Espana up front. You have Ahinga Salamane and you have Nick DePew. So the Gauchos and Fullerton underway here at Harder Stadium on a beautiful night. Now Batista turns it over and here's a long shot played in. And I honestly, Mark, I don't know what Heilman was doing there because they had a little bit of a build perhaps and he shot that one and that had no chance. Yeah, Ronaldo Pineda was making a little bit of a run into the box. I think he a little surprised he maybe didn't get a get a through ball or something. Well, again, Heilman, as great as he is, he is a converted center back. And so at, with the ball at his feet in the open field like that, maybe not his strength. His strength is certainly in the 18 and the six-yard box. Here's a nice ball played into the center of the park to Perez by Espana. And the Gauchos last night in training were working on this, widening the play, Mark, not just up and down the channels, but they want to have wide play tonight. Here's Foish and the Gauchos first time in the, uh, in the neighborhood of Fullerton tonight. Now here is uh, Mendoza and Randy Service. This is to the back post. Up to head it was Depew, and there was Elias to pull it down. So that was not a bad ball at all that time by Mendoza. Put it right on the back post. Nick was there. Just goalkeeper was on the on the money as well. You know, it, it's I think it's one of the advantages for the Gout. We talk about home field advantage, Jerry. You know, being because, you know, you're used to this field, you know, you you have your fans and all that. But a lot of it's what you just spoke of, playing a wide field. This is a, a wide soccer field. It's regulation, like unlike some in college soccer. Nice job by Salgado to play that away from the 18 as Heilman was looking to perhaps try to get something on frame there on the pass from Pineda. And now the Gauchos will work out of the back. Here's Dalton Pando, and he sends this one over the halfway line. That one played out wide. And cleared away here up to midfield by Cal State Fullerton. Titans so far looking a little bit more aggressive than the Gauchos. And the switch ball played to the near side to Lopez. And Fullerton breaks across into the attacking third. Played out by Batista, throw in for the Titans here. Titans have scored 27 goals this year, Not, not a bad number. The Gauchos cleared out of the box with Quesada. And a heavy first touch there by Salamani. The Gauchos have done that uh, scoring, but they're going against a very good one tonight, Mark, in uh, 
David Elias, who has a goals against average of 0 0.99. He has given up a total of 12 goals, has made 34 saves, and that tells you how good Fullerton's front line has played in front of him. 34 saves is not a lot of saves when you consider that they've played 21 games. Exactly. And also, Elias has got a very good foot, as you just saw. Casada heads this one off the back line, flicked back up toward the halfway line by Batista, and now here comes Perez breaking out. And Perez plays a beautiful ball down the right side. Selimani is taken down. It went about off of a hinge, but are they going to whistle? Or maybe it went off of the defender over there. So it's going to be a throw-in. It will be for the Gauchos. That went off the left center back. Now here's a ball twisted into the center of the field. Espana trying to work it closer to the top of the 18. Good ball played out to Perez. It got by him. Andy keeps it from going over the end line. He needs help over there. Perez trying to get by. Edge of the 18. Perez plays it in. Here's Salamani. Back to Perez and just a complete miscommunication there. And this is where Fullerton can be very dangerous. Tim said in our pregame interview that unfortunately we had some audio problems. Fullerton is most dangerous when the Gauchos are on the ball in their end of the field. In UCSB's end, in, in Fullerton's end, I beg your pardon, Mark, because the Titans are so good at breaking out and countering. Which makes it interesting because I know Tim did want to be a little more aggressive offensively himself tonight. So I mean, you have a team that can't take advantage of that. Here's Heilman playing a ball in, and Salgado is very lucky that hit the back of his foot. Otherwise, that ball played in as Quesada clears it out of the penalty area. That could have been extremely interesting for Cal State Fullerton. Breaking in was Alvarez there. Now the Gauchos, the other direction. Espana pushes it toward the edge of the 18, looking to serve. He does, and this one goes over to Pew, and it goes off the goalkeeper, and then it's played out by Cal State Fullerton. So a corner kick coming up for UCSB. What a ball that time by Josue Espana. Nearly got the head of Nick DePew. Yeah, you know, I can tell his, uh, he, he's, he's got his body back. And he's been, like we mentioned, he's been a little dinged up the last half of the season, and he looks pretty healthy to me tonight. He made a nice move, put himself in a position to make that, that great uh, service, and Nick, Nick almost had that. That was just an inch or two away from being a goal. Yeah. They still get a corner kick out of it. And so here is Josue Espana on the corner. And this will be an outswinger and cleared away, but not out of the attacking third. Kept in by Perez. Here is Pando playing one up over the top. Depew trying to get a flick on it. Heilman played it away. Here's a shot and a redirect by Depew that goes over the bar. Oh, boy. So the ball played in by Perez, and Depew with the uh, redirect that time shot it over the bar, but the Gaucho is very dangerous there, uh, Mark, and you are shaking your head uh, saying that uh, that was a chance. <laughs> yeah, it was a great chance. He was he was right in front of the six, and he – uh, obviously the ball's hopping up on him, so and he got a little under it, popped it over the over the crossbar, but he was right there. That was a that was a nice play by the Gauchos. And there's uh, Elias whistle here, Heilman over the back of Batista. No score. We're in the seventh minute here at Harder Stadium. The winner plays Saturday night in the Big West Conference Tournament Championship game. The season is all but over for the loser. So here now the Gauchos try to push it into the attacking third, and it's played away. Gauchos now in midfield, playing it back to Josue Salgado. Bill Mahoney just uh, sent us a text there, Mark. Want to say hi to our longtime friend, longtime associate athletic director for media relations and communications here at, uh, at UC Santa Barbara. Dear friend of yours, and I pay him every month to be a dear friend of mine. <laughs> How much? Yeah, 20 How much? You're not paying me anything. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you got to have a better agent. <laughs> that is so true. Gauchos try to pull out of midfield and... Uh, Excellent work by Ross McPhee there. Ross played very well against the Gauchos down there in Fullerton, and a good idea here by Espana, but uh, nothing came about from that. Gauchos on the offensive side of midfield. Now Foish has got some room. He's also got uh, Mendoza out to the left, and they play it out to the left off the foot of Depew. Randy serves it, and that one is deflected into the goalkeeper off of Pineda, and a quick uh, counter here, the attempt of a counter by Cal State Fullerton. Well, this is McPhee defended well there by Batista. This is where having Lamar Batista back, he missed the Gauchos last game because of yellow card accumulation. And 
great to have him back. Cause Absolutely. He can, he's, he's so fast. He can break up plays like that. Yep. So the Titans again dangerous. Here is Heilman now. This is Pineda with it being marked by Espana and Mendoza. And nice job by Randy there as they uh, double marked Pineda, who's very dangerous over there. Ronaldo can really serve the ball. Now the long throw in, and Heilman flicks it. Can Fullerton get a shot off? They can't. Nice work by Batista. Titans keep it in the attacking third. And here's a drive and a goal. One to nothing, Cal State Fullerton as Dorwood scores from outside the 18. Well, they gave him way too much space. He had a, quite an open shot. Nothing Brandon Burke could do about that. And he put it nicely right inside the, the right post. Wow, that was just a blast. And you're right. It, when you leave your goalkeeper just completely naked like that because you don't defend well, Mark, uh, you don't get to this level of college soccer unless you can hit a shot like that. So the Gauchos here at home give up a goal. And it's one to nothing, and they give up the goal in the ninth minute. Ruben Alvarez on the assist. And here is Cal State Fullerton leading here, trying to repeat last season where they beat the Gauchos here at Harder Stadium in the Big West Conference Tournament Championship game. Well, one of the questions I asked him was, was he a little concerned about having 10 days off? You get to rest your players. Here's Depew now chipping it. Not a good chip. Trying to get Salamani on the other end of it. And it's uh, played away here by Alvarez. Nice job by Ruben. But I asked him, Mark, if they could be a little flat coming out, and he was worried about them being a little flat. Now with Cal State Fullerton, all the uh, momentum in the world here as Pineda plays one, and I think some miscommunication there as uh, Burke way outside the penalty area. We'll send it back up to midfield, but nobody was tracking that uh, that long ball over the top. But Tim was concerned a little bit about the uh, the layoff and could they be rusty out of the gate. Now they do have fresh legs, no question about it. Now here's Heilman and so far no flag is up. It's a moot point as Mendoza gets there before uh, Heilman does. Now the Gauchos have to defend against going down 2-0. Yeah, I thought he might have been a little off sides there, but. I did too. Um, but no, you're right, I mean, uh, like we said, I mean, right now it looks like the, the defensively the Gauchos are not on the same page. And that is DeWart's too, second goal of the season. I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah, and that was just too easy of a shot. I mean, he got, I mean, he ripped it nicely. It was a great shot. But, they come again. But, uh, I mean, he was open, wide open. I mean, yeah. he was able to, 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 to wind up and take a, a pretty hard shot. And Gaucho's got to be uh, communicating a little bit better. Somebody needs to be on all their players when they're in the – he was just outside the box on that one. And when you're making that point, Mark, Cal State Fullerton basically walked it into the attacking third. Right. And Robert Coronado, who will put the corner kick in play here, was the one that served it from the left of the six. And Mendoza just had to play it out. So the Gauchos, again, being threatened here. Coronado bends one in, headed out by Foish, top of the uh, – Penalty area, Pineda unable to get a shot off as Espana was there defending and Pineda lost his footing. Fullerton keeps it in the attacking end. One to nothing Titans on a goal by Dorwart in the ninth minute on a shot that was probably a good 26, 27 yards out, Mark, right in the center of the park. Yeah. Nothing difficult <laughs> about it. Yeah, he had a clear look at the goal. I mean, there's really no one in between him and the goal. Except Brandon Burke, and, he, and it was a nice shot. I mean, he he put it right in, probably top shelf, top right shelf on that one, and really nothing Brandon could do about it. And Bautista sends this one into section 12 here at Harder Stadium, so Fullerton will throw in on its side of midfield. And a one to nothing Cal State Fullerton lead. You wonder too, without Tetuan Larue in there, and here's a ball played ahead, and Pineda is offside. And not even close. No, not even close. <laughs> you wonder though, because Brandon. Although he's got all this experience, you wonder if the Titans, if George Coates had, had uh, instructed his team in, in some fashion, Mark, to let's test him, challenge him from wherever you are. Yeah. Even uh, though Coates knows Brandon Burke and knows of his experience and right. knows that he's very talented, but he just, Brandon hasn't had a lot of minutes this year. Here is Kazada up over the top. Salamani heads it down. Depew now plays it to the right sideline and defending over there. For Cal State uh, Fullerton was Coronado, and it'll be a throw-in. 
No reason to panic, obviously. It's really early in the match, and the Gauchos are a very dangerous side. Yeah, actually, that was uh, DeWart that defended, who scored the goal. They are dangerous. However, UCSB has only scored one goal in its last three yeah, matches. I and knew you were going to bring that up. They're in an <laughs> offensive drought right now, and this is not a good time to be in an offensive drought, particularly when you're down one to nothing <laughs> in the match. Here's the throw in, headed once by Foist, and now the Gauchos win the second ball. Cal State Fullerton will drop players back, Mark. They are a good defensive team. But right now, they're stepping on the Gauchos a little bit on the back line here. They've already taken advantage of one Gaucho miscue in the back as Dorwart with a long shot beat uh, the goalkeeper, Burke. Now the Gauchos in the final third. Here is Foist. Kevin now working against Ullman. Plays it back, Espana. Oh, what a nice, beautiful heel pass by Espana to himself. Plays it in, and uh, on the volley, Salamani came up empty. Just a little too high on that cross. Salamani just couldn't quite get high enough to kick that in. Nice effort by Ahinga. That was a little behind him, too, I think. <coughs> And Elias with the right foot to it. 14th minute, whistle goes against Fullerton here. The Gauchos will start on the restart here. And Heilman called for a foul on Batista. And now Casada playing one up over the halfway line and headed out to the right side by Depew. Here is Pando playing it to Selimani. Selimani tried to play the through ball in. You know, I and now it's played out to midfield. Here's Mendoza. I think had Nick come down with that on his chest instead of heading it out, Mark, he had all sorts of space around him. Here now is Mendoza serving one in. Selimani on the other end of it collides with Elias, but the goalkeeper, David Rodriguez Elias, comes down with it. So the Gauchos are getting good service from their left back, Randy Mendoza, in this match. And they need all the good service they can get down one to nothing. Heilman is just a beast. He's a big, big man. Yeah, he reads, reads plays very well, too. And now a good turn. And Fullerton with McPhee playing it out wide. And this is Coronado. And Coronado tried to heel pass that time. And Pando intercepted. But now Fullerton back in the 18. Nice play there by Quesada. Here is Foyce trying to break out. You see how Fullerton is really pressuring the Gaucho back line, Mark. And so Pando just plays one up over the top, and uh, that time Depew chested it down, but it was too strong of a first touch, and Coronado intercepted for Fullerton. But the Titans turn it over. If the Gauchos can swing it out wide to the left, Mendoza can do some work. Instead, Foyce is passes deflected nice job by Batista to win it back Gauchos have got to widen the field here Mark they're working exclusively on that right side and Fullerton's defense is just sagging in on that right side yeah, everything's bunched up now the Titans break out and this is Michael Lopez in the final third Lopez plays it top of the 18 and they'll make one extra pass Gauchos have to defend here nice job by Pando as Pando blocked that shot Diamato and it will go out for a corner kick here coming up for Cal State Fullerton and Diamato is a little upset with himself I think he thought that he had a, a clear shot and Pando closed on him pretty quickly he had had some space there for a little bit I'm surprised McPhee, I'm sorry, uh, Mark, uh, McPhee didn't uh, shoot the ball there. Yeah, exactly. He was wide open at the top. Yeah. Tried to take one pass too many, but he, you're right. He had space. That was the same, almost the same shot that Dorte had a little bit earlier. So Nicolo Diamato on the corner, cleared out by Quesada. And here's a shot, and that just goes wide of the back post. Wow. Wow. That time, Salamani was coming up to defend that time, that hard shot by Michael Lopez. And I think Salamani really screened off uh, Brandon Burke. He not did. Not to. Yeah. And he didn't quite challenge him enough on the shot. He kind of ran at him and then kind of didn't really try to interrupt it. I think he thought that was going to be handled by the goalkeeper, but you're right. He screened him out. Luckily, that shot 
kind of sliced wide. So far the Fullerton back line has done a nice job tying up Depew and Salamone, and now here the uh, Titans pushing it into the attacking third. And here is DeWart who scored the goal in the ninth minute. He'll play it back, long shot, and this has got no chance. That shot off the right foot of Diamato. So it'll be a goal kick coming up here for Brandon Burke and the Gauchos with 27-24 remaining here in the first half. You know, so far, I, I, Gauchos don't look that quite that organized in the back. They, I don't know if it's if Fullerton's throwing something at them they didn't expect. Yeah. But uh, right now, Fullerton's had some da some dangerous opportunities. They've cashed in one of them. And now here is uh, Mendoza. And that will be a throw in for UCSB. Had Randy been able to keep that in, he had open space in front of him. Espana plays it, center of the park, edge of the center circle, Batista. Lamar being tracked by McPhee. And this is Pando along that right sideline. Tries to slide the pass in. And again, the Gauchos are just being pushed back. They, they really have to start working this left side of the field. Absolutely. More, Mark, <laughs> because they're just way too much on the right. Now here's Mendoza. That's not a good ball. And it's played out. It'll be a throw in for UCSB, but Michael Lopez got there in time to defend it out. Here's Foish. Well, they got their playmaker on this side, yep. uh, Josue Espana, but they, they lose the ball. And Mendoza lost it, but Randy will have a throw in here in midfield. Uh, yeah, the Gauchos have, for the most part, in the early going here, have just worked the ball exclusively on the up and down the right channel, and they've had no success. And now Quesada just plays one over the top. Depew chests it down, trailing the play is Perez. And Perez now working over there against the defense of Alvarez. And the Gauchos again push back to midfield. And Casada playing it all the way back to the goalkeeper is not going to get it done for the Gauchos. <laughs> because all they're letting, all they're allowing at that point is Fullerton to step on the back line. Yeah. And for Fullerton to regroup, here is Espana playing one up into the attacking third. That one off target, trying to get it to Perez. DeWart plays it wide. Fullerton basically with uh, three attackers right now. McPhee is out wide to the left. Heilman is in the center, and Pineda is playing out wide on the right. And now here is a, a break from midfield by Lopez. Lopez now in the attacking third, being uh, trailed by Espana. Ball played into the box. Nice job by Mendoza. The Gaucho is still not out of danger. Pineda. Pineda serves it, and that one off of Randy. Pineda tries to serve it again, touches it toward the end line. Nice job by Mendoza to play Pineda away from the ball that time. And now here comes Randy. And Salamani. Gauchos now trying to break out and get some numbers going the other direction. But you see all these Titans defensively. It almost looks like there's 22 Titans on the field right <laughs> now as well as they're playing defense. A lot of wide out there on the field. You're right. But I think every time the Gauchos play it back to Burke where they don't need to, it allows Fullerton to have that rest a little bit. That's the time you need to play it back to Burke. But you see how the yeah. Titans are coming in and they're stepping on the Gaucho right. back line right now. You know, it's a strategy that other teams have worked, have used to, to good effect against the Gauchos. Right. And I'm sure George Koontz has looked at a lot of video on, on the Gauchos this year and uh, anticipating this match. And, and uh, it's a good strategy because – Gauchos keep trying to reset. They're resetting every time and trying to build up, and it's, Fulton's doing a good job of forcing them back. And Fulton's defense is sliding laterally very well. Gauchos across midfield. Here's Foish now being pushed from behind by Pineda, and that's going to be a whistle against the Titans midfielder with 23.45 left to go here in the first half. one to nothing Cal State Fullerton on Ray DeWart's uh, Second goal of the season. It was a long strike, probably 27 yards or so, right in the center of the field. There's the magic foam by our official tonight, our referee, for the matches. Balmodero Toledo. And Bernhard Hossa is one assistant, and Adrian Gonzalez is the other. Gusada out wide to Pando. Now Pando in the final third trying to serve it. And Dalton played off the ball. Whistle, and this is going to go against Pando. So defensively, again, working over there. 
And a good work by Ruben Alvarez. Well, Gauchos for a spurt mark in there about a minute, minute and a half were dangerous when uh, Depew on a redirect sent it over the bar. Well, they haven't been heard from since. Yeah. That was about 10, 15 minutes ago. Sometimes they get in your head a little bit. They go, what, they've scored one goal in how many matches? Three. Three. Uh, Coming in. You know, you can, you can psych yourself out a little bit, especially when you're missing shots that normally you would make. The redirect by Depew, I think he's, he's probably thinking about that a little bit. And now the Gauchos have to defend again, and Batista does over on that far side. Right now, the Titans just own the Gauchos here in this first half. Fullerton to throw in. They've certainly been the more dangerous team so far. The Gauchos have had a couple of opportunities, but it seems like Fullerton's had about twice as many. Yep. And this uh, on the throw in is going to be Coronado. And DeWart played off the ball over there. Coronado, though, gets it back. Coronado looking to shoot. And he does, and he sends this one wide. Sends it into the VIP section. Did it go off a of Gaucho? It yes, did. Yes, it did. It deflected off of Josue Salgado at the top of the 18. So it's going to be. It's going to be a corner kick here for Cal State Fullerton. A little, more a little more than 21 minutes left here in the first half. Gaucho's down one nothing. It's do or die time tonight, Jerry. Gaucho's have to win to continue their season. And here's the corner, and that's headed out. Gaucho's now trying to get something going. España battling with Alvarez for the ball, and Josue wins it. Now here he comes. The Gaucho's trying to counter. Chasing España is Ullman, trying to slow him down, and the Gaucho's played off the back line, but a whistle. And a free kick coming up for UCSP. As Alvarez committed the foul that time, he knocked uh, Josue Espana to the turf. Very good foul. Very good foul. The Gauchos had, were building up to something there, and they, it's a good time to, to, to do it, just, just to make it cleats high where it might be a red card, but no card involved there. It was a good, good clean foul. Here's the ball played to the back post. Depew trying to get up on it, heads it over the bar. Depew marked beautifully by Alex Heilman that time. A former center back. A couple of former center backs actually going at it right there. Well, they're doing a really good job of marking Nick so far. Dalton Panda will come off, and Noah Billingsley will come on for the Gauchos here with 19.55 left to go in the first half. One to nothing Fullerton. At halftime, we'll hear from UCSB baseball coach Andrew Checkets, who guided the Gauchos to the College World Series last June. They're excited. They've uh, played a couple of scrimmages this fall, done a very nice job. Well, Foist actually didn't even go for that header right there. Now the Gauchos coming out of the back again. Boy, this Fullerton defensive effort is really, really Top notch. They, the Gauchos just don't, don't have any space on that field to breathe. Billingsley, the product from Wellington, New Zealand. Yeah that's, yeah, that's been the big difference in this match so far. The space that Fullerton has had and the lack of it that the Gauchos have had. The Gauchos have been able to operate very much. Yep. Gaucho back line pushed up a little bit. Nice ball won that time by Quesada to Foish, but Kevin's ball not even close to Depew. And it's uh, played away by Corvarubius. And UCSB again forced to retreat here. Nice play by Noah Billingsley getting the ball back. Batista lost his footing there. Well, it's a good thing he's got such long legs. He needed every, in, every inch of that he did. right leg to stop that ball. And Quesada again plays one over the top, and that's too far. Corberubius plays it out wide. Depew, nice job. Salamani. Salamani trying from the corner of the 18 to get it uh, over to Depew. And now here's Billingsley breaking in. Plays it out wide. Perez. Perez double marked over there. Back to Billingsley. Billingsley's got to put it in the box. He does. Salamani shoved. And uh, Salamani committed the shove. That's an easy call against the Gaucho striker. And it will be a goal kick coming up here for Elias. 
Not a good time to be committing a foul. The Gauchos were, had something going there in the box. Yep, and Diamato was shoved to the turf. One to nothing, Fullerton, 17-34 left here in the first half. First ball won here by Batista, but it's out. It'll be a throw in for Fullerton. And again, as I mentioned before, the Titans are going to come with a new player on. This is Diego Sanchez coming on for Cal State Fullerton. And I think it's Diamato coming off. It is. No, nope. no, it's not. It's Ray Dewart uh, coming off the goal scorer. So Dewart comes off. Just a freshman. He must be pretty excited about that goal. Yep. Second of the year. Freshman from San Francisco went to George Washington High School up there. Five foot nine, 145 pounder. And now here come the Titans again, breaking in from the left side. The new player on the field, Sanchez, is in the middle of the penalty area, and the Gauchos defend it out over there. Nice clearance by Jeff Quesada. Well, Tim Von Stieg has been a master throughout his career of making adjustments at halftime. There's no question. The Gauchos need to get this one off the back line. And it's uh, done nicely by Billingsley. But Tim's going to have to make some adjustments again here at halftime. Here's Salamani. He's got no numbers, but Ahinga's going to push it anyway. <laughs> it's one on six. <laughs> yep. And Ahinga plays it back. Here's Depew. Nick chips it. Trying to get Foish at the other end. Kevin heads it down. And it's going to be played out by Diamato out to midfield. Batista, good first touch here. And some of the adjustments that Tim has made, you and I have both seen, Mark, over the years, not just strategy, but with personnel, too. He'll, he'll really evaluate uh, with uh, Greg Curry and Greg Wilson uh, and, of course, Jeremy Clark, the uh, goalkeeper coach, so the first 45 minutes, and they'll decide that maybe someone is better than someone else. Here's Foish now. Can the Gauchos get something? Foyce plays it in. Salamani, oh, rough first touch. Had Ahinga been able to make a better touch, he had it right there set for his left foot, Mark, and just couldn't do it. Well, he knows it, too. Mm. <laughs> He's Good pretty ball upset played in himself. by Foyce. Too much orange on those shoes tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit too much paint. And the Gauchos now will defend the Fullerton throw in here from the near sideline. Gauchos are just standing around. Billingsley and Foish that time just kind of stood around and watched that one just roll harmlessly to the halfway line. Now Mendoza. And Mendoza trying to push it ahead. Depew slipped on the play. Couldn't get back. 14.56 left first half. DeWart on the goal in the ninth minute. His second of the season on a 27-yard rocket off his right foot from straight away. Fullerton now controls. Just a beautiful night out here. No win, no nothing, and now a good steal. Here comes Billingsley up the right side. Billingsley serves it in, trying to get to Pew. It went over Nick, and it will come harmlessly to Lopez outside the penalty area. Very impressive. Fullerton, like, right away they had three guys back right on Nick. He was completely marked on that play. I, yep. mean, I mean, the ball didn't get to him anyway, but uh, Gauchos had to get a, get a turnover, Billingsley gets the ball, and right away, Fullerton's back. Yeah, it's it's probably going to have to be somebody else besides Depew tonight. Here is Mendoza, if the Gauchos are to score. Mendoza serves one in, and that service not good. Cleared away by the Titans back to midfield. Here is Quesada. Good ball played there to Perez. Now here's Billingsley, and not a good touch as Noah turned that one over. And now here come the Titans breaking out. Quesada, nice job there to win it in midfield. Billingsley plays it back. Here's Batista. Gauchos trying to move forward down that right side. Billingsley running into a couple of defenders. That's been the story of the first half, has been Fullerton's defending. They have just been absolutely fantastic. The well, Gauchos need a switch ball here because nothing's working on that right side. Yep. And, and they've got their playmaker here on the left side. So here's the switch ball. Yep, and now good header by Mendoza. Headed it straight down to Espana. Espana trying to get by Sanchez. Plays it out wide. Is it too far? Randy kept it in. Randy now trying to push it by his man. Trying to get toward the edge of the 18. Espana now will take over. Espana pushes it. Edge of the 18. Espana looking to serve. And the Gauchos are going to get a corner kick out of it. So nice job. Nice work by Josue Espana and Randy Mendoza. 
I know, Jerry, you've been to more gaucho matches this year than I have. How successful have the gauchos been on corner kicks this year? And Not as successful scoring? as Tim would like. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Not as successful. I just can't remember converting many corner kicks this year, if at all. Yeah, and this is Espana now on the corner kick here with 12.29 left to go. Plays it back post, and that's right at Elias. Elias was hit by Billingsley, spilled it, but then got it right back. Looking at George Kuntz along the uh, sideline. George does not sit very often. Tim <laughs> right now is leaning against the bubble, the gaucho bubble over the uh, bench, leaning against the left uh, side of it. Here's McPhee now trying to break in and whistle, and this is going to go against uh, Quesada. I thought for a moment that Billingsley might draw a whistle there. I think he actually called it on did, Billingsley. Did he, it I think they, he let it play. possession. I yeah. think they, yeah, they let him play on after it in case they had something going there. Yep, good, good call on your part, Mark. That's right. The, the delayed whistle. And the referee is going to. Well, it's a lot of a wall there. That's pretty, pretty wide, long wall there. I mean, far wall. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he set that up. Here's Coronado bending one in, headed by Foish, but only to the top of the penalty area. Perez had it bounce away. A nice job by Salgado to play it up to midfield. Here's Depew. Jeez, Nick just draws a crowd, doesn't he? Yep. And that's why I say I, it's probably going to take somebody else if the Gauchos are going to get this done tonight besides Depew. That's just my guess, and, and I mean that with the greatest respect to Nick. He's got two, three, sometimes four guys on him. Yeah. Somebody else got to be open. And that's why he's what their number three goal scorer this season. Right. You know, behind Foish and, and Hinka Salamani. Yep. Mendoza now trying to push ahead of Sanchez. Gaucho struggling just to get it out of the back. I like the fact that they're not sending it over the top, though, out of desperation. They're dribbling through this traffic. And now here's Mendoza, and that pass did not connect with Foish. The, the Gauchos have not had success playing balls over the top tonight because all they're doing is playing the ball into the teeth of the back line of the Titans. I like the fact they're trying to now dribble through and create some one-way traffic going the other way out of the back. I totally agree with you. Sanchez plays it ahead. This is McPhee. Now nice job by Quesada coming over, way over from his right center back position. And now... The Titans are going to bring Brandon West on. Brandon, we have seen a lot of Brandon uh, last year and this year. He's just a sophomore, but he's a very, very dangerous player out there, Mark. Very good player. From Sweden. Yep. And West on the uh, <laughs> first effort. We jinxed him. Heavy touch. <laughs> Got your goal kick coming up. Yeah, 9.38 left to go here in the first half. And Mendoza now. Oh, it went right between Salamani and Depew. The Gauchos. You take it, I take it. Yours, mine, yeah, ours. Can't do that. <laughs> can't do that because Fullerton's plenty happy to take it. Yeah. Good ball by Espana here into Salamani. I think it trying to turn. Couldn't do it. Back to Foish. And again, not a good ball that time. Just not connecting right now. It's certainly not time for Fullerton with a one nothing lead. Here's Salamani to, to uh, bunker down, Mark. But the Gauchos are just having a miserable time trying to play through midfield and trying to, to win the uh, Fullerton back line. Yeah. With about 20 minutes left to go in the match, you'll see the Titans bunker, bunker down if they haven't already. Diamato possesses in midfield. This is McPhee. As they move it into the attacking third, Sanchez, right corner of the 18, plays it in, the redirect, and that goes over the bar. The redirect by Brandon West. Did it go off of Quesada? It did. It's going to be a corner kick here for Cal State Fullerton, and I think Quesada did very well for himself there. He did. You know, I was a little, I was really surprised Brandon West got as wide open as he was. I mean, he was pretty unmarked running through the box like that. Someone's got to pick him up. Coronado will come over. And put the uh, the corner kick in play here. Clock moving, 7.56 left to go here. And he plays it short to Scoronato to Corverubius. Here's the ball played out 
too far. Now headed, headed by Depew to get it out of there. It was initially headed by Salgado. And Batista really flicks this one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, pro that flick probably went 30, 35 yards in the air. Maybe not 35, but about 30 yards in the air. That tells you how strong Lamar's head is, his neck, to be uh, able to flick it that far. Hey, he might have a headache tonight. <laughs> he really launched it with his head. The ball played too far for Foist. Kevin is kind of roving all over the place. Nobody's got a better work rate than nope. Kevin Foish. That was Elias with his left foot. Put a good left foot to that. There's his powerful right foot. Batista is going to be whistled here, I think. Is it West? It's West and Batista. Mm -hmm. Is the referee going to mark? Yeah, he yeah. is. Referee is actually going to bring out a yellow card, and that had nothing to do with the play. That was Ruben Alvarez, and I think Alvarez was barking at the uh, referee and... Because when the ball got, he's uh, given he's given two yellows. He has. He gave one to. Did he give one to West also? No, he gave one to Batiste. Oh, to Batista. <coughs> yeah, I think after uh, after Lamar was hit, he retaliated through an elbow, and referee saw it both mm. saw both uh, both infractions. So the Gauchos will have the free kick on just outside the center circle on the defensive side, the midfield. And Salgado, again, that's just a wasted free kick. Yeah, I'm not. It doesn't well, do any good at all. I, I don't know what that throw. was all about. Yeah. <laughs> 6.38 left to go here in the first half. One to nothing Fullerton on Ray DeWart's second of the season in the ninth minute. Foish, nice job here by Kevin. As he was going against Sanchez, ball played out wide to Casada. Casada, bad pass, intercepted in midfield. Sanchez making a run down the field. They're trying to get it to him, trying to stay in an onside position. And Alvarez did not pull the trigger on the pass. Now here come the Titans again. And this is Coronado playing it out wide, but too far. Or is it? Yes, it is. Perez did a nice job to shield the man over there. Throw in for the Gauchos in the back. 5.57 left here in the first half. One to nothing, Cal State Fullerton. Well, one thing I, I think has happened here in the first half, I think Fullerton's work rate's been a little bit better than the Gauchos. Oh, absolutely. And now here's a turnover by UCSB. This could be dangerous. Here's the ball played. It's uh, played outside the 18. Here's a drive, and that's not even close from off the right foot of Diamato. So it'll be a goal kick coming up for Brandon Burke. Yeah, Diamato would have been better off settling that ball yeah. before he kicked it. He had time. I agree with you, Mark. And I think McPhee over there, he was trying to get Sanchez, but just had way too much of an outswinging ball that time. And a whistle, and this is going to go against Salamani. So the Gauchos are getting no breaks right now. And Cal State Fullerton happy to take whatever UCSB is giving them. This has been a half where you, we, we talked about the fact that the Gauchos have only one goal in their last three matches, Mark, but they this is as anemic as this offense has looked in that, you know, even over those last three matches. Gauchos have hardly been dangerous in this first half. Yeah, I'd agree. I think in the UC Davis match, they had a lot more chances than they've had tonight. And now, again, I, I got to say, Fullerton's come out with a pretty good game plan against the Gauchos. And these are two coaches who know each other so well. Alvarez gets it to Sanchez, and he's played off nicely by Foist. Kevin's ball played ahead to Espana. Now here is Salamani. Plays it back to Mendoza. I agree with you, Mark. I mean, I don't know what the Gauchos are going to do in the second half, but they better do better than that. Oh, boy. That's, a, that's surprising to see Espana just fl flub a ball, have it go yeah. out of bounds. That's not like him. Gauchos seem a little frustrated right now. And now here is West. And this one played into the final third by Alvarez. Pineda with it, trying to shoot. He does, and it's blocked nicely by Perez. Goes back to Pineda, plays it in. Cleared out by Salgado. Nick DePew almost came up with a possession there for the Gauchos. Yeah, went right through his legs. <laughs> 3.36. I mean, he, was hust he was hustling over to get it. I mean, it wasn't like it was a bad play, but it just unluckily went between his legs. 
McPhee with it. He's been a very active midfielder here in the first half. And now here's a long shot, and that goes over the bar. Oh, nice try. It just sailed just there's over the Nicolo crossbar. Diamato with that uh, tester there for Brandon Burke, and Burke didn't have to worry about it. Here comes uh, Jan Ilskins in for UCSB, and Salamani will go out. Tim does this a lot. He'll take a Hinga out uh, late in a half, get him some rest, obviously all of halftime, then bring him out, and not even start him in the second half, but right. – bring him on at some point in the second half and really have some fresh legs. Yeah. Get that tank full again. Gotchos will throw in from midfield here. He goes so hard, I think it's Soleimani, that yes. I mean, he does it. He's one of those guys, it's just too, too tough to ask him to do that for 90 minutes, the way he plays. Salgado again. This one to Depew, headed out, and it'll be a throw in for the Gauchos. Lopez, def no, yeah, it is a throw in for the Gauchos, and Lopez defending there. 2.22 left first half. One to nothing Fullerton on a goal in the ninth minute by Ray DeWart, the freshman, second of the season. And the Titans have just put on a defensive clinic before and after the goal. Yeah, they have a lot of guys drop back right now, obviously. Just yeah, they, they have a very good shape ago, about them tonight, yeah. offensively and defensively. They're just a very, very solid team tonight. Nice ball played by Espana to Foish, but then again, Kevin draws three guys. Now here's Espana. Espana with the through ball. No one there. Depew was trying to stay on side there. That's why Nick really couldn't make that run mark because yeah. if he if he did, then he's offside. Yeah. Florida taking their time. They'll be satisfied going to halftime with this one nothing lead. They're a minute 33 away from doing that. The Gauchos need to defend and not give up a second goal, which would be catastrophic. This is Lopez, and Espana defends it out. Lopez will throw in, approaching one minute. And Lopez a long throw in. Mendoza heads it down. Here's Ilskins with his first touch. Jan. Salgado, at, boy. Oh, what was, my goodness, what was uh, Lopez doing there? Everybody let it go. <laughs> Went off of a gaucho, so it'll be a throw in. Alex Tatarica is going to come on now for Cal State Fullerton, or is he? Nope, the referee's not going to let him on, the fourth official down there, not yet. 38 seconds to go. Batista. Gaucho's turn it over again, and now here's West, and Batista is pushed down. So, see if the Gauchos try one more run here. 25 seconds left in the first half, and we will hear from Andrew. I think we'll hear from Andrew Checkets. Nope. Mendoza now up into the final third, and this one gets through everybody. And that should do it. 10 seconds left here in the first half, and I think Elias is just going to dribble it out. He is. So, Mark, Gauchos have a lot to talk about at halftime. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've uh, been taking the woodshed here in the first half. I mean, their gauchos are lucky it's not more than one to nothing at this point. Kind of wondered, and you talked about it earlier, about the, the danger of the gauchos being flat. They haven't played in a while. Uh, Florida had the – it could be a benefit. It could be a detriment to have to play that first-round match, and I think so far it's been an advantage having played that match. They look so much sharper than the gauchos. They look, frankly, better prepared. I mean, they, it seems like they've got the right formation to play against the Gauchos. It looks similar to what we've seen with a few other teams play this year to kind of frustrate the Gauchos offensively. But, you know, we, we've seen the last three games where the Gauchos have had the chances to score a few more goals than they have. But tonight, not, not as much. I mean, they had that one redirect by Nick DePew right in front of the goal mouth that he just got too, much, too under, sailed it high. And other than that, uh, yeah. uh, and they've been marked so well in the box. And he, every time the Gauchos send something into the box, every Gaucho is covered. Yeah. Especially Nick just... DePew, and that's who they're going for. But this formula has not worked too much this year with uh, Nick. I, I can't recall that many headers that he's scored this season. Now, Kevin Foyce, yes, he's scored a few headers this year. And that's because he's not the guy that teams are as concerned about as they are with Nick. Well, the last time Nick scored a goal, Mark, was October 19th at UC Davis in overtime, 
and that's been it. Yeah, that's that's a while ago. Yeah, that is a while ago. So almost a month ago. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, the the one thing that could happen is you know, Florida played, you know, a match last Saturday. Gauchos did not. Gauchos should have the fresher legs for the second half. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's the case. But right now, Florida is a team with more energy than the Gauchos, which is for a, for a match here at Harder Stadium is a little surprising. Yeah, and last year when the Gauchos lost to Fullerton one to nothing here at Harder Stadium, Mark, uh, Tim Von Steeg felt that that was one of the best matches the team had played all year. Now there wasn't the the uh, pressure that the Gauchos have this season because this season it's uh, all the coaches in the Big West are convinced it's a it's a one team. Uh, bid for an NCAA tournament spot, and that is the winner of the Big West Conference tournament on Saturday. Last year, three teams got in. The Gauchos got in, Fullerton got in, and Northridge got in. And so maybe it's because the Gauchos knew that they were going to, at the very least, have an at-large bid last season that right. they, they, they didn't play with a lot of pressure. It may also be that they are very tight out there right now, that they're playing with a lot of pressure, knowing that they have to win. And it's a lot easier when you don't have a lot of pressure on you or you don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to go out there and perform. Especially when the goals have been tough to come by the last few weeks. Then you start to feel a little bit. feel like you're a little snake bit. You know, it's yeah. been a, like, you know, I think we've talked about this a little bit. It's been a frustrating season for Nick DePew, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with it seems like teams are getting away with manhandling him so much in the box. There's a few reasons for that. One is Nick doesn't flop. I mean, it's right. just not in his, his DNA. So right. you're not seeing him go down as much. I saw an occasion in the UC Davis match where he was basically tackled in the box. I mean, they were begging. They were challenging the official to make a call there, and they did not because they don't like to make calls in the box. Right. They don't want to give PKs. And I think teams' have strategy has been manhandle Nick as much as he can because he's so big, he's so strong, and he's so fast. Yeah. And um, – that can get into a guy's head. I mean, yeah, you know that. Certainly can. Then when he has a couple of balls hit the bar, it makes it even worse. So we'll see. There's obviously a lot of soccer left to play here tonight, and you know I'll be surprised if I don't see the Gauchos come out with a real, you know, with real fire in the second half. Well, they have to, or else they're going to have a long off season if they yeah. don't. Mark, uh, Cal State Fullerton outshot UCSB eight to three. Fullerton had the advantage in corner kicks four to two. And uh, no saves for David Elias. No shots on goal for the Gauchos in the first half. One save by Brandon Burke. And the goal coming in the ninth minute by Ray Dewart, second of the season. Ruben Alvarez on the assist. And uh, 25 yards is what, the, uh, is what Andrew Wagner, uh, our outstanding sports information director here for men's soccer, has uh, given on that shot 25 yards straight away. And you can say it was an innocuous shot mark uh, uh, you know a harmless shot right 25 yards well not with these players and their skill level because they can really rip it and he and Dewart had a wide open frame at which to shoot uh, and I, I mean Burke was back there but there's no defender in front of him right well that's a wide goal mouth when yes. a guy is taking a shot from 28 yards or 18 yards because from 28 yards not only do they hit it hard but they bend it right. it's not coming in at the goalkeeper straight a lot right. of times and it was just a perfectly placed shot by uh, DeWart. And, uh, I mean, that's the goal. The, the difference has been Fullerton's defense and the fact that the Gauchos have not even been able to breathe in the, their, even in their end of the field on their, on their back line. Three shots, none on goal. That just amazes me. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, you're, you're just, like we said, only one real opportunity on the redirect by Nick, and that's it. And uh, so... It's interesting. I mean, if George Koontz, you don't want to change anything. If it ain't mm -hmm. broke, don't fix it. And the Gauchos, they need to come up with a different formula right now because this ain't working. No, certainly not. Well, we'll put the headsets down and just take a little break here. Mark's also working on another story. The Santa Barbara Dons lost uh, their CAF water polo match today to Modern Day, a great Modern Day team. Mark, you told me they're ranked number five in CAF Southern Section. Uh, the reason they were up here in Santa Barbara is because their league is so good. They actually finished second. 
<laughs> to the, to the best, I think to the to the, the, the best Marcos team in Division One, Orange Lutheran that's played San Marcos today. So Channel League, oh, our local oh. teams got t tough for draw. <laughs> yeah, they, they certainly did. <laughs> they certainly did. And uh, thanks to Mike McKean back at the News Press, our great uh, page designer, uh, keeping me updated on uh, on things. And we'll get an update too. And maybe I'll ask Mike here uh, if he can get us something on the Northridge uh, match because uh, we're working on some other stuff here. We're trying to get the Andrew Checkett's interview uh, going. We'll see. Uh, what's going on with that but mark and i'll take a break here and just uh, let you see the uh the sights here at harder stadium and back for the second half one to nothing fullerton
Back here at Harder Stadium, Jerry Fall, Mark Patton with you. One to nothing, Cal State Fullerton with the lead. A ninth minute goal by Ray Dorwart, the, the uh, second for the freshman, Ruben Alvarez on the assist. And the Gauchos coming out of the locker room here with about 2.42 left to go. So they did not, uh, and Greg Wilson out there, you see him uh, right this side of the center circle, very animated. One of Tim's assistants, there is Tim Von Stieg. Yeah, Randy, Randy, Randy Mendoza is very animated. He's he's trying to charge up his teammates. There's Tim going into the bubble. So well, the Gauchos have got to do something here, Mark. Outshot eight to three. No shots on goal in the first half for UCSB. Fullerton had two shots on goal. One got by Brandon Burke, twenty-five yard strike by Torwart, and that's the difference in the match right now. But you wonder if we may see more of uh, uh, some personnel changes here in the second half. I, I think you might because you know, Tim's not the kind of coach who just sits back and let, lets things things continue as they no. as they are. And it's been a you know if, if if we see the same like I said the same formula as the first half, I, the Gauchos already done because there's nothing yeah, happened. Right. Nothing happened really except for one play. They had a couple of couple of services into the box that just you know really had little chance easy plays for for Elias the Fullerton goalkeeper so yeah there are the gauchos right there breaking huddle and but I can hear Randy him. Mendoza is the one that's very animated down there yeah. so you wonder if we'll see Alex Liua Alex is a big strong powerful soccer player very skilled you wonder if we'll see Costimoni could see Mateo Restrepo Mejia second half gotcha's got to do something because uh, they need a goal to equalize one to nothing fullerton and the winner of this match will advance and play cal state northridge uh, mike uh, texting me thank you mike uh, I, I did not realize this mark and my apologies uh, apparently that was an afternoon match at fullerton uh, excuse me at northridge northridge has lights but uh, the uh, matadors won it over sacramento state one to nothing in overtime samuel dodzi a header off uh, off of a, a flick by Patrick Hickman. Hickman, the Big West Conference Defender of the Year. Gabe Robinson threw in on the play for Northridge. Hickman flicked it, and Dadzi on the header. And that was the winner for Terry Davila's side. So Northridge, if the Gauchos don't win this game, will host Cal State Fullerton. If the Gauchos win this game, then you're going to have a couple of friends get together Saturday night here. It'll be Tim Von Steeg and Terry Davila. We talk about what a terrific coach Tim Von Steeg is and, and uh, George Kuntz. But Terry Davila is, is, is as good as anyone, Tim. I mean, he's just what a program he has down at Northridge. Just does an outstanding job down there. And he had the, got the Matadors uh, defensively for 90 minutes, and then they got it done in overtime. Today. Well, you look at this league, Jerry. It's kind of interesting. There's so many veteran coaches. I mean, Tim Von Steeg has been – been here since the late 90s you know yeah. George Coons here at Fullerton he was a coach a long time for UC Irvine and and before that I remember in the old old days he was at Cal Lutheran several decades ago yeah. he's been around the block a few times Davis's coach he's old enough to even he's been at Davis long enough he remember when Bob Williams was a basketball yeah, coach there absolutely coach Schaefer yeah so, so you've got a lot of a lot of veteran experienced coaches in this league which is why this has been such a good league Absolutely. Davila and, and Von Stieg both came into the league at the same time. So the Gauchos kick off here to start the second half. Looking out there, uh, Mark, I'm seeing basically all the starters for UCSB and uh, looks like all the starters for Cal State Fullerton as well. Uh, the referee blow the whistle, he did. This is going to go against UC Santa Barbara. So yeah, a this is uh, Foish. Yep, and this is uh, Ronaldo Pineda who is shaken up, but fortunately he's okay. Just put into play by Coronado, long ball, top of the Gaucho 18. Batista headed it away, then lost sight of it, lost track of it. It's uh, played by Heilman. Heilman was shoved that time. And the referee says play on. I think the Gauchos got away with one there. Yeah. I think Mendoza really shoved him. Yeah, Randy Mendoza, our boxer on the team. <laughs> yeah. He floored Heilman. And Quesada let that one go through. And now the Gauchos have to clear it away. And just a 
Terrible start to the second half for UCSB. I, I'm not quite sure what Cassetta was doing. If he was dummying the ball through, thinking Perez was right behind him, but Andy was not. Yeah, that's dangerous to do in the, your own box. Gauchos Very will, dangerous. Absolutely. Pin, Pineda defending there. The Gauchos will throw in. UCSB has just had nothing so far to write home about in this match. Here's the ball played to the middle of the field by Perez, headed down by Mendoza. Nice job by Salamani, first touch there. The hang out wide on the left, here's Mendoza. And again, the Titans defending very well in midfield and the whistle here and the foul on Mendoza. Hmm. Tell you what, Fullerton is, well, there's a reason why the Titans have not uh, lost in their last eight matches because they can really play defense. Gauchos have been a good defensive side as well. Sanchez, by the way, is in there to start the second half. He's uh, the only one I can see that did not uh, start the match that's out there for either side. Coronado plays one top of the 18. Batista, not much on that right-footed clearance. Played down by Depew. Now here is Foish. Ball played too far ahead by Espana and controlled by Alvarez. But now the Titans turn it over, and now can a Salamani outrace his man for it? Cannot do it. It's played back to the goalkeeper by Lopez, and Elias up over the halfway line with a long kick. Good idea that time. Salamani, though, just unable with all his speed to get to it. Good recovery by Fullerton on that one. And offside here, the, whistle, the flag up for offside on Sanchez over there on that far side. Boy, you can tell Randy Mendoza is or very is it, feisty this half. He gave a yeah. nice little push there to a Fullerton player. And it's the second time I've seen him getting physical in the second half. He doesn't want this season to end tonight, Jerry. Yeah. No, and there's Randy right there. Mendoza, one of, he's a junior, so the Gutchels will have him back next year, but he wants to play a lot more. And again, nothing happened here for UCSB. Good crowd for a Wednesday night out here. It's a nice turn by Sanchez, and now he creates some space, trying to play it in. Turns, actually it wasn't Sanchez. That's Sanchez on the ball there, and Espana has to clear it over the line. I think that's McPhee over there. Boy, he did a nice job, didn't he? Yeah. Sanchez uh, on the trail run that time, and all Espana could do is just clear it out. Well, Lamar Batista was pushed down. The Gauchos lost the defender there in, during that run of play, and you know the official wasn't looking that way. It was a could have been a a tough break for the Gauchos to lose one of their to, to lose one of their center backs, have a goal scored in that situation. And so now the Gauchos have to defend the corner kick, the fifth of the night by Fullerton, played out by Batista. Kept in the attacking third by Lopez. Plays it back in. Batista again heads it and was and here's a shot and that one is wide. Fullerton thought they scored. It's wide of the goal unless it went through the goal. It went through the net. And it's a goal for Cal State Fullerton. And it's Coronado on the goal. 2-0. Fullerton with the lead. 40-39 remaining. That ball ended up behind the goal mark, but I just think it, it there's a hole in the net and it went through the net. Yeah, that was strange. Well, they're taking Jeff Quesada out, I think. Gotcha, Tim, I, we, we talked about Tim making personnel changes. You know, the second half, guys just aren't getting the job done. And you're seeing Jan Ilskins come in right now looking for something, but Gaucho's season starting to, it's going to start ticking away pretty soon. Yep. And the Gauchos again, no answer for Fullerton's push that time. And Coronado scoring the goal. And now the Gauchos have a real problem on their hands. And they're still being outplayed. Even though Fullerton looks like it's intent on scoring like five goals. Heilman almost had a chance to turn and go with that one. Coronado his second goal of the season. And for Fullerton, it's 29th of the season. Still plenty of time. And you'll hear Batista played off the ball here by McPhee. You know, again, I got to say, that goal was not Brandon Burke's fault. His no. back line is not doing the job tonight. Nope. 
Neckline struggled on that play. So the Gauchos in real trouble here, trailing 2 nothing in the match. And now here is Sanchez breaking in and a good slide tackle there by Salgado. Sanchez goes down. He collided with either Salgado or Burke or both. And it's going to be a throw in for UCSB. And Burke trying to help him out a little bit here. But Sanchez, is he holding his lower back or is... That's what he's pointing at. And the referee is calling for the trainer. Boy, it... A nice slide tackle that time by uh, well, Salgado. Yeah, it was Salgado and Burke that both got there at the same time, and it was kind of a three-way collision. He did get his foot on the ball. Otherwise, we could have had a penalty kick right here, and that would have been uh, the end of the match for yeah. the Gauchos. Already down 2-0. Well, the Gauchos are on the edge of the cliff as it is. Yeah. Clock stop, 39-18 to go. Good, good to see Sanchez up and able to walk off. Well, the Gauchos had to know tonight was not going to be easy. I mean, they, they got all they could handle from Fullerton down in Orange County uh, earlier this season. And right now they're getting completely outplayed, completely. The Gauchos have not given up two goals in a match since September 29th, the Big West Conference opener at UC Riverside. That ended in a 2-2 draw. Pineda in the attacking third now, and Perez plays him off the ball. Andy is pushed down. Whistle. Yep, that'll go against uh, Pineda. Well, they always say, Mark, a, a two to nothing lead is the toughest sometimes to hold in soccer because you get down two nothing, all of a sudden the other team just cuts loose, doesn't hold back, and you end up finding yourself under serious attack. But right now the Gaucho offense continues to be anemic out there. Yeah, I just haven't seen anything out of the Gauchos tonight, nothing offensively. Boy, nice job by Pineda there, and there's a whistle and a foul against Perez, I believe, or nope, it's going to go against Fullerton here. But So Ilskins is actually playing right center back in place of Quesada. Here is Foist. And Billingsley knocked down. Noah is another one, I should mention, that did not start the match, but is in here in the beginning stage of the second half. So Perez, can the Gauchos get something here? 37-49 remaining. Espana plays it out wide. Mendoza now. And the Gauchos again just being pushed back to midfield here. Good switch ball here by Batista. Perez, Billingsley. Andy trying to navigate through traffic. Good ball to Billingsley, and Billingsley kept, keeps it in. Perez now has got a chance to serve one. He does. Back post, and this one is grabbed by Elias. Depew is upset there as Nick thought that he was hit in the box on his way on that back post run. But all uh, Corrington Ullman did was screen him off which is good defensive work. Very good defense. I think, again, the the Titans have Nick DePew's number tonight. Just has not been free to do anything. And one thing Tim talked about after the Davis match was he wanted the Gauchos to penetrate the box a little more than they have and instead of just serving balls in all the time. And, you know, they, I saw them try it once or twice early in the first half, and that's been it. And they, now they've just been launching balls in a box, and it's not going to work. No. I mean, not, not as well as, as Ford is marking Nick DePew. It's just not there. Yeah. Gautzo's breaking out of midfield. Espana, good ball to Mendoza. And Randy's service is defended out, so the Gauchos will throw in here with 36-03, remaining in regulation, 2 to nothing. Fullerton, quick throw in. And 
<coughs> now you can look for Fullerton. They're already doing it, but to yeah. really bunker down. Yeah, yeah they've, they've been bunkering in now. Perez offline to Salamani, and Salamani's going to get whistled here. Nope, referee says play on because it was a Fullerton possession, and now Cal State Fullerton across the halfway line with Pineda. His uh, ball, not a good ball to Heilman there. Well, a few bad balls I've seen Fullerton play tonight. Yeah. They, their passing's been so much better than the Gauchos. And it'll be a Fullerton possession along the near sideline. Feucht has been neutralized very well by this Fullerton defense tonight. So too has Espana, so too has Salamani to go along with Depew. They have really, really been neutralized. Coronado, Feucht trying to win it. And it's played up over the top by Covarrubias. Nice job by Jan Ilskins. Here is Selamani now. Selamani breaking into the attacking third, but cut off beautifully by Ullman. Selamani back up. And a whistle and a foul here on Cal State Fullerton. So the Gauchos will have a free kick along the left flank. And something needs to happen here, you would think, Mark. Still plenty of time, 34-22 remaining, but right now the Gauchos have had zero answer for Cal State Fullerton. If they can get a goal, they'll feel a heck of a lot better about themselves than they do right now. Looks like it's going to be Espana, the right footer, who will swing one in. And Josue approaches the ball, plays it in. That one headed out nicely by Alvarez. And here comes Fullerton now on the counterattack. And this is Pineda. Pineda trying to keep McPhee onside. Steady slides one to Sanchez. Sanchez right side of the 18 going down as Mendoza. Sanchez played off the ball on the help defense over there by Espana. And now here is Salgado defending. And Salgado knocks down Nicolo Diamato over there. Boy, it got scary there when Mendoza slipped and fell down and Fortunately, Jose Espana hustled over yeah. and covered for him. Otherwise, that's a goal for Fullerton. So the Titans throw in. Nice job by Batista, but here's a shot by Pineda, and that goes over the bar. Wow. I say nice job by Batista because he did his job, and you see Brandon Burks looking for a ball. Gachos can't even get help from their own home side here. <laughs> Now he gets two balls. Careful what you ask for, right? <laughs> I put them both in play. Meantime, the, yeah. <laughs> Might be tougher for Fullerton to defend two soccer balls <laughs> instead of one. <laughs> no other strategies work tonight. Maybe that would work. Foish pushes it ahead to Depew. Right back to Foish. Good through ball. And Billingsley unable to get to it. Excellent work by Coronado in the back there. Boy, he's played well, Mark. He really has. Well, they're the better team tonight. I mean, there's no question about it. Yeah. This is no accident, no fluke. 2 nothing, Fullerton. They're the better side tonight by far. They're playing harder. They're better organized. Their defense is so much better than the Gauchos. Salamani gets to it. He's got Depew making a run top of the penalty area. And what a great slide tackle over there by Diamato. Wow. Yeah, In the they... open field. Mendoza. And a whistle here. The foul is going to go against UCSB on that far side. I think that's Espana over there. Yep. Well, there's a confidence with Fullerton, Jerry. You can really see it. You know, they've been here before, mm -hmm. you know, in this position, Big West Tournament. They own this tournament. They know it. And yeah. tonight, they've totally dispossessed the Gauchos of a – of what has been a very successful Big West season. I mean, the Gauchos were the best team during the regular season of the Big West, but that means nothing right now because they're not going to the NCAA tournament if they lose tonight. And unless something changes dramatically, they are going to lose tonight. They're down two to nothing, and there's no signs that they have found any answer to Cal State Fullerton. Yeah, no, they haven't. Yeah, the, Fullerton has been the better team, like you said, Mark, as Coronado is going to take the long run over. Oh, and he's going to take his time, too. <laughs> Let the clock tick. It's 
still a lot of time, 31 minutes, just under 31. And Gauchos are, you know, they have some talent, but nothing's working. They have not been really dangerous at all tonight. Coronado, the in swinger, and that one flicked up by Batista, headed out by Billingsley. Alvarez knocked down by Billingsley. It'll be a throw in. No, it won't. I actually thought that uh, Billingsley would be whistled there. Gauchos will throw in in the back here. Billingsley, a rough first touch. Pineda able to win it. And I think this is off of Ilskins. It is, so a throw in for Fullerton. And with 30 minutes and 13 seconds remaining, Mark, what we're going to see is we're going to see the Titans really start taking their time yeah. on a lot of things. I agree. And they're doing it here. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And Ilskins plays it out, so a corner kick coming up here. Well, you just tell the Gauchos have really lost their their rhythm. Yeah. Their, yeah, they have. You know, layoffs will do that to you. And this is going to be Diamato. Yeah, they don't look sharp tonight. And Tim was concerned about would there be some sort of rust. This one played in, headed out by the Gauchos. Here's a long shot. And that one had no chance off the left foot of Alvarez. So Burke in hurry up mode as the Gauchos are right now. Batista. There is Feucht. Again, not connecting with Billingsley. Yeah, boy. <laughs> That's one of the differences in the match. Fullerton connects, Gauchos do not. McPhee now look at how open Pineda yeah. is. And he circled back. Ilskins defends. Has to play it out. But again, Fullerton looking for the death blow here, which would be a third goal. Lopez plays it out wide. Sanchez with it. To the end line. Sanchez was over the line. That one served in. And You're right, Jerry. It seems like every time the Gauchos are anywhere near uh, the Fullerton goal, they have got Titans wrapped all around them. It seems on the Fullertons and the Gaucho side of the field, they have space. Yep. 28.05 remaining here in regulation. Coronado with a second half goal to go with DeWart's first half goal. And that's been it. And the Gauchos still do not have a shot on goal. Here's a ball played into no man's land by Batista. Fullerton to throw in in the back here. The winner gets Cal State Northridge. Whether it is at Northridge on Saturday, and that will be the case if Fullerton holds on and wins tonight. If the Gauchos are able to stage a comeback, Northridge would come here. Billingsley trying to split a couple of defenders. Did well enough to get it to Foich. As Perez is down, Andy gets up slowly. Andy's holding his left hip or lower left lower back area. See how much the Gauchos just have to work in midfield, Mark? Yeah. Just to try to get something? That's exhausting after a while. That's a nice ball by Mendoza to Billingsley. Now they play it out wide. Perez, Feucht, and Depew are at the back post. Ilskins. And now here is Espana chipping it. Here is Depew putting it down, trying to get a shot off. Can he get one off? He can't. Another excellent defensive stand by the Cal State Fullerton Titans. Everywhere he turned, there was a Titan. Yeah. There's three guys there. It was there. almost like they were coming up, coming up out of the ground like sprinkler heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just. yeah. So I don't think that play is going to work. Not tonight. At least it gave the Gaucho fans a little bit of hope that maybe something could work. Batista not playing it well off that first uh, effort. Heilman got it to Sanchez, but now Batista recovers and defends well. 26-20 remaining in regulation. Two to nothing, Fullerton. Oh, a nice ball here by Espana. Perez, he's got space up the right side. Now he plays it to Billingsley. Billingsley charging toward the right edge of the 18. Serves it in, and the redirect. The Gauchos have scored. Kevin Foish 
was actually making the back run behind Salamani and Foish was able to settle it and drive it with his right foot for his 11th goal of the season. And the Gauchos are breathing life with 26.03 remaining. It's two to one Fullerton. Well, you could just see the, the burst of speed by Noah Billingsley. Wow. He just beat his man, was able to get a nice cross. And I think Fullerton was pretty concerned with Ahinga Salamani. And there was Kevin Foish to collect it and put it in. What a job by Billingsley, as you said, Mark. And really, what a terrific ball out of midfield by Espana to play it to Billingsley. Yeah, exactly. Out in space. All right, we've got a ball game now, two to one. Well, the Gauchos, DeWart is back in. Gauchos playing it off the back line. Here's Ilskins now. It's just the Gauchos' second goal in their last four matches. They need a third goal in their last four matches to continue breathing this season, at least to have a chance. Perez up over the top. Can Depew win it? Depew off the right shoulder, played down to Diamato. Now the Gauchos with uh, some energy out there. You can already tell it's affected their, their run of play here. Here's McPhee off of uh, his right foot. Ilskin's over there defending. Now it's Mendoza defending. And the ball played out off of Mendoza. Michael Lopez, nice job for Cal State Fullerton over there. <laughs> and look at the Titans. They come right back at you, don't they? Yeah. Okay, you just. I like that strategy. Nice job by I... Salamani coming back on the end line to help out. Boy, had Foish been able to get on that. Now the Gauchos still have something, maybe. Foish is wiped out in midfield. And that's going to be a yellow card. Farsht is wiped out by Diamato. So Diamato wiped out uh, Kevin Foish that time. Foish popped right back up. You know, actually, good play by Diamato because, I mean, you hate to see a guy do a card. I want to say that's a good play in that regard, but, I mean, the Gauchos had oh, yes. an opportunity there, and that ended it. Yeah. And it, it here's a good free kick now. I don't know how Salamani got that wide open. Salamani serves it, and that one's going to be a corner kick for the Gauchos. 24-36 remaining. It, that, that was not a, a violent or, or a, a dirty uh, tackle at all by Diamato right. Mark. It really wasn't. He just It just happened to be that he, he made sure Kevin Foish wasn't going to yeah. matriculate the ball down, uh, down the pitch anymore. Just a hard tackle. Yeah. So here is Espana who can really do damage on corner kicks. The in-swinger coming up from the right footer, Josue Espana. Gauchos. Boy, there's a summit going on in the six yard box. Here's the ball played in and up to head it straight down and Elias lost it and the shot is blocked. The shot that time by Foish was blocked. Here's another shot by Espana, that's blocked. And Mendoza now looking to serve. Boy, Elias that time Mark spilled it and now Mendoza trying to push it through and the Gauchos will at least get a throw in here. Boy, the, the referee is really upset with Elias. Elias was screaming at him, feeling he was fouled, and referee gave it right back to him. Back post, and this one tipped over the bar. Actually, it would have been wide of the bar, but the Gauchos are getting a corner kick here. As Elias went high with Depew lurking in the neighborhood, you never want to take a, take a chance with Nick. And so Elias did the smart thing that time, Mark, even though I do believe that that was going to be wide of that back post. Elias wanted to take no chances because he did not know exactly where Nick was. Yeah, yeah. Better, better to be safe than sorry in that situation. 23 minutes exactly remaining. And now Espana plays it in. Depew gets a flick. No, Depew was knocked down. No call and cleared away by Coronado. And here is Mendoza keeping it in. Nice job by Mendoza. Billingsley back to Mendoza. Randy. Pinned in against that left sideline. Here's Batista. The Gauchos have everybody on the offensive side of midfield. The only person on the defensive side is the goalkeeper, Brandon Burke. Here now is Espana. Espana is going to get another corner kick. Well, he almost had him beat. I mean, he... Good work a, by Alvarez yeah, for Fullerton. Cover. Took a hard shot from the ball, too, on that, on that one.
Yeah, I think I'll say Espana is a little bit, he's either cramping or he hurt his, his hamstring. Yeah, I see what you mean, yep. So it's gonna be Mendoza now, a left footer, so this will be an in-swinging ball. Clock continues to move, 21-59. I think it's a cramp, the way he keeps hitting his, his, his uh, hamstring. Here's the ball played in, that's not a good corner. Easy, easy clearance, but now great job by Mendoza to read that one. It went off of uh, Espana. Now here is Foish. Foish serves one in, and the ball played out by the Titans. The Titans are bunkering down. Gauchos have nobody back. Everybody is on this side of the halfway line. The offensive side, another throw in for the Gauchos. And look at Mendoza, who's the left back. He's all the way over on the right side. Yeah. Billingsley now, the Gauchos trying to convert. Billingsley, what a move. Billingsley serves it back post, and that one punched out by Elias, and he'll come and grab it as Nick Depew was making the run at the back post. Great job by the goalkeeper. Boy, he was pushed so hard. You could see him setting up for it, and all of a sudden he just went flying, which is, you know, it happens all the time. Now I think Josue, Josue is hurt. Yep, and the referee is going to stop the clock, so I think they'll probably get... No sway off the field here. He's cramping up. Andrew Shibata, Gaucho's terrific trainer. Who's Tim going to bring on? He's going to bring on Omar Montavo right now. It's interesting. Omar has not played that much this year. No, she's played in uh, three matches. 21 minutes to go in this match. And the Gaucho's playmaker has left the pitch with cramps. Sanchez coming back on for Cal State Fullerton. Two to one. Boyce with his 11th. Yeah, it is, cr this. It is cramps. They're, they're stretching him out there on the sideline. So what they're going to do is they're going to let uh, Elias have another goal kick here. And we're ready to go. Here's the ball flicked ahead. And Burke off his line. This could be dangerous. And it's three. To no, it hit the post. The Gauchos got so lucky. The shot hit the post, the left-footed shot as Burke was way outside. Wow. The penalty area, and the Gauchos just got as fortunate as you can get. Wow. That, he had a wide-open goal. Nobody there. He should have just dribbled it in. And now, I mean, it's like he's, you know, he's way on the field like he's hurt, but I. Yeah, that's McPhee. I guess he got hit after he shot it, but that was McPhee who shot it with his left foot and it hit the right post. I thought for sure that was a goal. Yeah. Well, let's see if that's going to be, Mark, a uh, pivotal point in this match. Well, that would have ended the match pretty, pretty much. And now the throw in here, and the Gauchos play it out with Ilskins. Selamani's got a lot of energy. Selamani ran his man over, no call. Referee says play on. Here's Montavo with fresh legs. Good ball played out to Selamani. Uh, Henga now playing on that right side. Plays it back center of the park to Foish. Kevin will play it into space to Mendoza. 20 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. And Billingsley will earn a throw in for the UCSB Gauchos. Gets it right back from Mendoza. And Mendoza now to Salamani. Billingsley with it. Boy, Perez is asking for it on this right side. Instead, they play it to Foish. Now, here's Depew. If they play it into space to the right there, they've got Perez. And Perez now with Montavo, top of the six. Plays it back post. The header is missed by oh. Billingsley. Missed it. He missed it wide of the far post. And Noah had a flick on it, but he missed it. Boy, he was unmarked. He was right there. Just mishit it. And I think uh, easier said than done from where we sit, Mark. I think if Noah goes back post on that one, Elias was over there. Elias may have saved that if it was on frame. Yeah. He was so close to the goal mouth, it would have been total reaction play by Elias. And Elias, not the best of goal kicks there. I think his plant foot actually slipped. The Gauchos break out of midfield. Ilskins here has some space. Switch ball would be good to Mendoza here. Now he'll play it along the turf to Randy. And even 19 minutes left here in regulation. Two to one Gauchos. Fullerton advanced by beating Davis on Saturday. And they did it on penalty kicks after a 1-1 score at the end of two overtime periods. Batista now up over the top. Mendoza 
Actually, it was Billingsley who stayed on side, but that ball too far. And now Elias with the quick throw out to the right flank. Gauchos win it back in midfield. Billingsley, Feucht, plays it up. Here is Salamani. Salamani up the left side. He's got Depew making a run into the box. And what a great slide tackle over there by Cal State Fullerton's Corentin Ullman. And the Gauchos are pushed back. Can Sanchez get to this? He does, but to keep it in, he had to play it back in right to Batista. 18 minutes exactly remaining in regulation. Gauchos need a goal to tie it. Montavo now. And Montavo tripped. Flag goes up. Free kick coming up for the Gauchos. And Espana is getting ready to come back in. And the Gauchos cannot take much time here, Mark, as they are doing right now. They're taking a, an awful lot of time on this to get set up. Again, everybody on the offensive side of midfield for the Gauchos. The only one back is Brandon Burke, the goalkeeper. Montavo will swing one in with a left foot. That one flicked, top of the 18, ball's loose. Shot by Foyce and it goes over the bar. Kevin Foyce with a left-footed shot and it went over the bar. Oh boy, that was, that that was our chance right there. Josue Espana comes in, 17 minutes, three seconds remaining, the clock moving, Montavo comes off. Good ball, ball that time yeah. by Omar. Very good ball on the free kick. Yeah, he put it in there, Ahinga Salabani got a piece of it, got, got over to Foyce and he took a swing at it and just Set it high. Both teams have had their chances here in these last couple of minutes. Nilskin wins the head ball, but then it's just played all the way back down into the Gaucho end by Covarrubias. And Salgado will let it go out and throw in. Got Batista over there. Might as well throw it to him. There you go. Now Mendoza looking to get something out on the left, but Fullerton now still stepping on the Gaucho back line. Can Salamani win this one in midfield? Can't do it. And Fullerton controls. Here they come. Titans breaking out with Alvarez. Down the left side. Ilskins does a great job to come up with it that time, but now Foist having trouble with McPhee, and he'll play it back to Burke. Flicked ahead by Salamani. Salamani now to, oh my goodness, they're whistling. Look out, Depew is really upset. Foul is called on Nick Depew here. And Nick better be careful. Clock continuing to move, 15.36 left to go. Two to one Fullerton and the Titans now taking a lot of time, Alvarez. He'll play this into the penalty area over the head of Heilman and That'll be a throw in for the Gauchos. Tonight's game be being brought to you in part by our friends at the San Inez Band of Chumash Indians. The San Inez Band of Chumash Indians, a proud sponsor of the Gauchos. Sanchez plays it out, another throw in for the Gauchos. And they are now starting to look up at that scoreboard, which continues to move. The clock, 14.57. Two to one, Fullerton. The Titans led one to nothing at halftime on DeWert's second of the season. Coronado made it two to nothing. And then Kevin Foist with his 11th of the season. And that's where we're at right now, two to one. Gaucho's hustling all over the place, trying to win possessions. Sanchez now, right side of the 18. Ilskins defending well over there. Sanchez was hoping for a corner. Now the ball played in. And Batista had, chance, had time to settle it. The Gauchos turn it over. And the Titans now moving it toward the end line, and that is going to be a corner kick for Cal State Fullerton, and they'll take more time off the clock. Well, not a smart play by John Ilskins. That gave Fullerton an opportunity there to put this match away. And the Titans now are going to come with two new players. Oscar Torres will make his uh, first appearance in this match, along with Ronald Ro Ronaldo Pineda comes back on, a starter.
Clock ticking away. About 13 and a half minutes to go. And here's the ball played in, headed out by Mendoza. The Gauchos need to break out and hope for a, a counter or something. Diamato keeps it in the attacking end of the field. Plays the uh, ball into the 18. Rough first touch by Ullman. And Mendoza keeps it in nicely to Espana, but Espana turned it over. And Ilskins, again, working hard, but Fullerton maintains the possession. Pineda plays it out into space here to Coronado. He's got lots of space. Coronado serves it in. That one actually hit the heel of the new man on Torres, and now the Gauchos break out. Here is Foish racing it across the halfway line up the left flank. Foish now has got Salamani making a run toward the top of the 18. Kevin is hit, and a foul call. A foul is whistled against uh, Fullerton, so the Gauchos will have a free kick here, and the referee is stopping the clock because it looks like Mendoza no, is. No, that's Josue uh, That's Spania. Josue with the cramping again. And Andrew Shibata, the trainer, is making a long run out there. There's Andrew, 12.49 left to go. So this is the second cramping episode for Espana, Mark, and they may not be uh, with uh, Josue much longer in this match. Yeah. <clears throat> so Montavo may come back on here. He's to the right of the bubble, which hovers above the Gaucho bench or the overhang. Yep, this is definitely a cramping of the right leg. Tough break for the Gauchos. I mean, he's their, their top playmaker. Boy, you'll harken back a couple of moments ago when that ball was bouncing around in the Fullerton penalty area in the 18-yard box just outside the six, maybe the top of the six mark, and Kevin Foish with a left foot hit it over the crossbar. It's a tough shot, yeah. though. I mean, the ball, you've got defenders around, and you're rushing the shot. No question it was a tough shot, but he hit it over that crossbar. That would have... Even the match. And the header by Billingsley that went wide. Yep, they're going to take Josue off the field on the far side. So Montavo uh, will come on now. The good news is the Gauchos have been dangerous the last yep. you know, 20 minutes. There's Mendoza getting ready with the free kick here. 12.49 remaining in regulation. And Mendoza, no doubt, is going to go into the penalty area with this free kick. He does. He chips it in. And that one headed away by Diamato. Back to the halfway line. Salgado. And this is Perez. Lost it. Coronado took it away. And the idea that time by Coronado up the uh, left flank, but that had no chance to connect with Torres. Boy, you look at what Fullerton is doing, Mark. I mean, they're really not bunkering down right yeah. now. There's a bad... Uh, Touch by Alvarez and allowed Depew to possess in midfield for UCSB. I'm actually surprised they're still pushing forward, and now Billingsley is pulled down. I think they're just going to, well, oh, he's going to his pocket. It is. It's going to be a yellow card here against Lopez. And Noah gets up limping away. Twelve oh five. The clock is stopped. And this is going to be Montavo now, who just a few moments ago had a, a free kick that uh, was dangerous for the Gauchos. That was the one on which Foish missed with the left foot. Montavo plays this one to to uh, Depew, who heads it into the 18, but cleared out by the Titans, and Montavo now is going to go up and over his man. Did he go up over Heilman that time? I think that's Heilman who's down. Yep, he's back up, fortunately. 11.45 to go. Time running out on the Gauchos' season if they can't get another goal. 2-1 to one Fullerton. Gauchos trailed 2 to nothing till Foyce goal. Long kick here by Elias. Headed out over on that far side by Batista. And we're going to see Dalton Pando coming back in. He is a real playmaker for the Gauchos. Started tonight at right back. Pando is going to come in the next time he can. Tim Von Stieg is talking to Pando right at uh, the table near midfield. 11-11 left here in regulation. Fullerton throwing in. Headed away by Batista. Gauchos need to get possession of the ball here and not let the Titans 
run a lot of clock, which they'd like to do. Coronado plays it up to Pineda. And this is where Fullerton can spread the field, Mark, and take some time. And instead, it will be a throw in for the Gauchos. And that'll be the opportunity that Tim needs to get Dalton Pando in for Andy Perez. Is he? Yep. That's an offensive move. You're bringing an offensive player in for a defensive player. And offside. Way Billings, offside. Billingsley way offside there. See, every time something like that happens, you see Fullerton will just take a few extra seconds, 10-20 remaining here in regulation. Throw-ins, Mark. Yeah. Uh, goal kicks. Take a little extra time, as, as they should with a 2-1 to one lead. Batista way up over the top to win that 50-50 ball. And now the referee is going to blow the delayed whistle here on the foul against Fullerton. Kevin Feucht going against Torres. Good ball here by Mendoza to Ilskins. Plays it out wide to the left side. And Billingsley turns and no one there. Thought Mendoza was making the the run down the flank there, and he was not doing it. 9.33 remaining in regulation. Gauchos need that goal. And Elskins oh. just turned it over. Heilman now. And Heilman plays the ball wide of Torres. Salgado, great job. Excellent job by Josue to win it. The Gauchos now with Pando. He's got fresh legs and all the speed in the world, but Pineda does a great job to catch him. Pineda was grabbing him. The Gaucho bench wanted a foul. And it's Alvarez who took it away. That one hit Montavo. Here's Depew. Nick with a good job. Centering, center of the field. Here's Foish now. Kevin looking to shoot. Plays a through ball. Billingsley. Billingsley trying to get a shot off. Kept it on his foot too long and was uh, dispossessed that time by Coronado. Well, they just swallowed him up. Got to get rid of it. You can't hold on to it that long. Here is Pineda chipping one ahead. And Torres, top of the penalty area, plays it back. Dummied through to Sanchez. Sanchez with a shot. That hits Mendoza. And Randy will clear it back. 8.30 remaining here in regulation. 2-1 to one Fullerton. Diamato chips it with a left foot up to Torres. Gaucho's just very late defensively getting back here. Yeah, they look out of gas right now. There were a lot of people standing around. And the Titans just uh, kick was, it out. I think it looked like he thought he could bang it off a of gaucho and missed. Salgado now up to the halfway line. And dispossessed dispossess that time by Heilman. Heilman doesn't have the numbers, but let's see if he tries to get a shot off or if he takes it to the corner to try to kill a little time. And Heilman has that one go off of him. Is that, That's going to be a corner kick here. Wow, I guess it went off of Batista. 7.30 to go. It'll probably be about 7 when they finally take this corner kick. Yeah, they'll let some time go, that's for sure. Nice play by Heilman to depossess the Gauchos that last time. And it'll be Diamato on the corner here. You can hear Tim Von Steeg yelling. Diamato is taking forever on this corner kick. Seven minutes exactly left to go. Don't understand why the referee's not blowing the whistle at this point, Mark. Now he does blow the whistle to get him going. The referee's the one that took forever there. There's the ball played in, cleared out. And the Gauchos now break out. Nice ball by Foist to Depew up the left side. The crowd hopeful here. Mendoza, final third, attacking area. Mendoza cannot get around Michael Lopez. Kept into the attacking end of the field by Ilskins. Boy, has that back line of Fullerton played well tonight. Yep. And. Fullerton ball. Fullerton throw in. 6-12 left in regulation. Two to one Titans. Referee getting boot on that call. But uh, those fans are a little bit biased, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, what a job by Billingsley just to keep that from going out. And now Sanchez plays it across the uh, halfway line. Gachos have this entire side of the field open. If they could get it over to this side of the field, Montavo, well, he's being marked a little bit by Coronado. Diamato wins the second ball in midfield. Now plays it ahead to Torres. This just is all Fullerton wants to do. They're, even if they don't get a goal, they're just killing time. 5.26 remaining. Gachos are tired. Sanchez plays it out to the near sideline, and they're going to let him take it to the corner. And it's played out by Ilskin, so that's going to take even more time. And well, now they're going to bring McPhee on. Sorry, Mark. I was going to say, it's interesting. It seems like Fullerton, even though they played a game last Saturday, and the Gauchos didn't. At this point, it looks like all that energy the Gauchos put into trying to get back in this match, it looks like they've run out of gas. I mean, they, Fullerton seems like the team with a little bit fresher legs right now. Well, the Gauchos had it in the back there. Here's Depew now. Oh, good first touch here by Montavo. And Pando lost it. 440 left. Gaucho season very much on the line right now. And Coronado knocks the ball into the table. He, he didn't do that on purpose, did he? <laughs> well, <laughs> smart play. Can't, you cannot blame him. Heilman plays it down. Montavo now. Nope, no connection there. Remember earlier in the season, Mark, when the Gauchos were really struggling protecting leads late in matches? They, they were really struggling at doing what Fullerton's doing very well tonight. That's just kill yeah. the clock with good passing. Now here's a turnover and McPhee. McPhee plays the through ball for Sanchez. Nice job by Mendoza, the left back coming all the way over. And Randy now on the right side of the field. The Gauchos break out. Here's Ilskins. Plays it up to Foish. Foish now over the halfway line to Billingsley. Touches it back. Here's Ilskins. Gaucho's moving the game down the other direction, and Ilskin's pass offline again. Yeah, he's had a tough time with passes well, they all tonight. <laughs> Quick throw in back to Jan Batista. But Fullerton has done well killing the clock tonight, and Salamani's pass intercepted, but Ahinga got it back and then delivered a bad ball. Sanchez able to intercept, and Batista now playing it back to your goalkeeper just takes time. Only about three minutes to go in this match. Gaucho's down 2-1. Here's the ball flicked ahead by Depew. Foish gets a flick on it. Billingsley can't get to it. Good job by Salgado to read that flick by Heilman. Now ball over the top to Billingsley. The ball outside the penalty area. And again cleared away. And again a foul called here on Salamani. More time will be taken by Fullerton. Well, doing a good job of killing the clock here. Yeah, the referee's letting him do it. The referee yeah. keeps talking to the Fullerton player, but that's the Titans are very happy with that. 2.26 remaining in the Gaucho season if they cannot score. Mark will be downstairs with the uh, post-game press conference, I believe with both coaches. Now the Gauchos send it up over the halfway line. Billingsley unable to get anything on it. And Fullerton turns it in. Sanchez, or check that, McPhee will go to the corner. Ilskin's trying to prevent him from doing that. And the Gauchos take it away and then send it out. Yeah, that's no not what you to want do to do. That. I think the season's about to end here. It's only a 150 to go, and Fullerton has taking all the time they want. Well, the Gauchos have just got to understand that you, if you have a chance to keep the ball in, keep it in. And a goal kick coming up here. Now the Gauchos throw two balls in again. Gauchos break out, Montavo now. Minute 30 to go. Pando up the right side. Pando's got some space, he's got speed. Pando now being chased by Pinata, Pineda. Pando with a great move, Pando serves it and that one is cleared to the top of the 18. Salamani trying to get a shot, flicks it in, cleared away. Salgado now on the other, the other end of it. Here's Pando, Pando. With a pass behind his foot, and Salamani is going to earn the corner kick. Ahinga wants the ball. Got a minute to go. 
And now they get it in. Here is Pando. Pando pushes it across the end line. He keeps it in, serves it in, and this one clear to the top of the 18. Montalvo now. Ken Ilskins get a shot. It's headed over on the far side by Billingsley. Played back out to Mendoza. Randy chips it in. And the header, and this one, the Gauchos wanted a handball, but instead they'll get a corner kick. 36 seconds remaining. Here comes a... Uh... Burke coming in with the court with the corner kick. They're bringing all the gauchos. And here's the ball played in, and Depew goes up. It's punched out by Elias Salamani with the clock running down to 20 seconds, and Ahinga is tripped. The referee blows the whistle. The gauchos have got to get the ball back in play. The clock does not stop, and now the referee still isn't. St he finally stopped the clock with 12 seconds. Well, this will be it. This is it. 12 seconds to go. Six seconds, the clock is moving. Pando serves it in and that's gonna do it. I think, here's Foyce, can he get a shot off? He can't, the match is over. Cal State Fullerton is going on to the Big West Conference Tournament Championship game where Cal State Northridge will play host to the Titans who hold on for dear life here at the end. And the Gauchos A frustrated, disappointed group tonight, losing for the second consecutive season here at Harder Stadium in the Big West Conference Tournament to the Cal State Fullerton Titans. Yeah, kind of deja vu, uh, but this one had more at stake. The, the winner moves on, the loser is done for the season, and the Gauchos are done for the season. They will not get an NCAA tournament bid. Their RPI is not good enough to get an at-large berth this season. And, you know, it's, uh, I thought they came with a lot more energy in about the last half of the second half. But yeah. up until then, they weren't showing me much. And they turned it up. But in the end, they got maybe a little desperation involved. But well, congratulations to Cal State Fullerton. Absolutely. They, they earned it. They did. They, you know, I, I've always hated the cliche, you know, a team wanted it more. Both teams want to win. Nobody wants to lose. But there's an edge a team will come with and play with. And the Fullerton had that edge tonight. I didn't think the Gauchos had it. No. You know, and, and, and Fullerton was absolutely uh, the, the, the better team on the field tonight. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. The Titans came in here and they had a game plan that worked against the Gauchos. They stepped on the Gaucho back line. They connected passes. The Gauchos did not connect a lot of passes. And Fullerton just absolutely outplayed the Gauchos from the opening uh, minutes of this match. Uh, right. The better yeah. team. I mean, you know, yeah. if you want to say the better team won tonight, sometimes soccer can be cruel. You know, sometimes the, the, the you know, it's a, the better team doesn't win because soccer is that kind of sport. There's not a lot of scoring involved, so that can happen, but yeah. That wasn't the case tonight. They came with a good game plan. They executed it. They didn't lose their energy throughout the entire match, and they were able to finish it off. Gauchos did get that one goal on a really a nice play by Noah Billingsley to get the ball into yeah. the box where Kevin Foish finished it for, what is that, his 11th goal of the year? 11th goal of the year. And but, now the <clears throat> Titans are going over there to all their fans. Mark, we'll, we'll let you get downstairs, General. Uh, Enjoyed it very much. Okay, but before I say, sign off, I, I do want to remind everybody that the <clears throat> Gaucho basketball team will be playing their season yes. opener on Saturday against Nebraska Omaha. <clears throat> you, you stole I... my line from later. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you can sorry. repeat it again. And the Gaucho women <laughs> open their season at uh, Iowa State, State. on uh, Friday morning at 10 <clears throat> our time, but Bob Williams and the Gauchos, 2 o'clock. Saturday at the right. Thunderdome against Nebraska Omaha. That's a return trip for Nebraska Omaha. And that's they're an exciting team to watch, Nebraska Omaha. That was a good opener for the Gauchos last year. They won on last second tip Eric, in by Eric, Eric Childress. Childress. Yeah. But Omaha's got one of the best, you know, he's they got a point guard who led the nation in steals last year. He's a very dynamic player. It'll be an exciting, fast paced game on Saturday at two o'clock at the Thunderdome. So still yep. a lot of action for the Gauchos this weekend. Absolutely. General, thank you. We'll let you Grab all your stuff and head down. And uh, I know they're going to have two press conferences, I think, one with George Kuntz in the College Cup room and the other with Tim. I'm not sure who goes first, but we'll let you get going down there. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Thank you, Mark Patton. Great job by Mark. And uh, disappointing for the Gauchos. So we'll take a break. We'll keep the camera uh, on the uh, 
the scene here at the end. Congratulations again to Cal State Fullerton, and congratulations to Terry Davila and the uh, uh, Cal State Northridge Matadors, who uh, beat Sac State in overtime uh, today by the count of one to nothing, the final score there. So uh, it'll be Fullerton and Northridge, two teams out of the south that will uh, decide the Big West Conference tournament's uh, automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. So we'll take a break from the mic and get set up downstairs so we can have our press conference.
back here at uh, UCSB. We're waiting for the press conference downstairs to begin. There you see the final, Fullerton with a two to one win. And the Titans move on to the conference tournament championship game. Now I got a report from our guy Mike McKean back at the uh, Santa Barbara News Press that Northridge had defeated Sac State one to nothing, but then we just heard downstairs that somebody <laughs> was watching the match. So Mike, I don't know if if we got the correct information if that match is over. Mike's usually spot on with everything though. So. The season ends for the Gauchos here at Harder Stadium. Ray DeWart with a goal in the ninth minute on a 25 yard shot. Ross McPhee in the 50th minute scored. As that made it two nothing. Kevin Foish for the Gauchos in the 64th. Now we go downstairs to the press conference at Fullerton going first. This one? Okay. This one can stay. Are we all set, guys? Yep. All right, so we have with us head coach, Cal State Fullerton, George Coons, and the two goal scorers from tonight. We're going to have uh, the coach open up a statement, and then we'll go with uh, questions for the players and the final discussion. Do I need to pick it up? Yes, please. Uh, all right, so um, we all know that UCSB is a, a great, a formidable opponent, opponent, and we know that that playing in this conference, the most roads go through. Go through. This is one of the teams that you have to play, and so uh, I want to commend UCSB to a great season, uh, a great conference uh, tournament, a great a great conference record, and uh, I thought they had a, a, a fantastic year. At the same time, I'm really proud of our guys. We went through a lot of adversity. We started out with you know seven pre-existing injuries. We went through a really rough stretch, and our guys, um, they bent. <laughs> they, they did not break. They bounced. And so I'm really proud of our guys for this, for this game and, and their, their execution tonight. Well, there's a cross in the box, I think, and then the ball happened to come to me. And Ross was actually asking for it, so um, he was telling me in the locker room that I was lucky I scored it because he got he was, he would have got mad at me if I because I didn't give it to him. <laughs> um, but I didn't want to lose it, so I passed it back to Ruben, and Ruben gave it back to me, and he gave me a good ball, and I just turned and I had space. And coach, we were just working in practices like to take a sh uh, we were working on how to shoot like when we see the chance. So I just took the chance and went in, and it felt great. To be honest, I just tried to hit it on target, yeah. yeah. And I will, I aimed it toward the right side, but yeah. And Ross, uh, talk about your, your um, Rob served in a good ball, and the defenders kind of got it, and it just kind of fell to my feet, and I just, just shot, and coach said, shoot as much as possible. That's what we've been working on, trying to shoot, so decided to have a go, and it, Happened to fall into the bottom right, so I'll take it. Usually, you know, there's there's a debate on whether or not it's it's better to have a buy the first round and just get the rest, or is it better to you know have that momentum going a little bit? Do you guys feel you got some energy from 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 winning a, winning an overtime PK shootout on Saturday? Um, yeah, I feel last year we had the buy, and then this year we didn't. I, I, you just got to focus on the next game, really, and not not worry too much about whether it's a buy, what the other team are doing. You just got to focus on yourself. I think just focus on the next game and just build from there. I don't I, I don't really mind either way. Like it's plus and minuses to both, I suppose, isn't there? So. Ray, uh, tell me your first playoff game as a college soccer player. How nervous were you tonight? Um. Well. 
before the game, I was a little nervous, but as soon as like I heard the first whistle, it kind of went away, and I was just focused. So, like everything, like yeah, I wasn't as nervous. It seemed like you guys had a lot of energy tonight. And yeah. You know, I was wondering if, if you know, if, you know, sometimes you can extend too much of it earlier in the match and it disappears. But it seems like, aside from that one little burst Santa Barbara had, you know, in the second half, you guys really kind of maybe over, even overmatched them with energy tonight. Do you kind of sense that out there? Yeah, I feel like we were able to uh, keep the ball. Um, well, for the most part, we were pretty composed. And, yeah, I feel like, yeah, we, I don't know, like, we were just able to possess and be comfortable around them. And, yeah. Um, and last question for you, Ross. Um, I mean, playoff experience, I mean, how, how, how far does that go with this team? You know, you had a good, you beat Santa Barbara last year in the playoffs. And, I mean, do you get any confidence from, from just from the success that Florida has had in the playoffs the last few years? Yeah, I mean, you always enjoy this time of the year. It's always fun playing these games. I mean, this is why we, why we play it, really, isn't it? To to play these games that really matter, and it gives you a lot of energy. And I think all the boys know that in the locker room. Like, we know it's really do or die at this stage. So we're all lots of energy and keen to get out there. And the playoff time is always always good for us, and we all know that. I think both last year and this year, this this is where we've been the most focused and had the most energy. Because we all know that it is really it could be our last game, and we don't want that to happen. So we always put in a not that we don't always put in a hundred percent, but we just feel the energy lifts at this time of the year. Thank you. Sorry, the players. Oh, okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. You had a tough loss against Santa Barbara earlier in the year, losing in overtime. Um, so, I mean, it seemed like you, after that, you guys have been a little bit of a roll lately. You've had a few ties, but uh, it seems like you've played better the last few weeks, maybe the last month of the season. Yes. Um, as I said, you know, this has uh, been one of the most unique years in 30 some years of coaching college soccer. Absolutely unreal year as far as injuries. Uh, we couldn't, if you look at the lineups throughout the month of October, late September, I'm sorry, uh, late, late, most of, sep half of September into October, we couldn't keep the same lineup on the field. We went to our third, uh, not necessarily the third for any other reason, but we went to a third right back, a third left back. Um, Robert, Robert's not a left back. Robert Coronado, he got an assist. He's, he's, he's a left mid, <laughs> or he's, he actually came to us as a six. So he's a guy that, that um, you know, I, I got to commend because it's not his natural position. We've asked him to play it this year. So, you know, so many things have happened to this team, uh, adversity, uh, injuries. Um, you know, we were digging for a little bit more leadership. And I, I think, you know, Ricky, Haum, and David, you know, David broke his hand at the beginning. He was broke, came in with a broken hand. So we had another goalkeeper in who's a fantastic goalkeeper from France. Uh, but you know, Dave is, you know, was there last year, so he's come back into conference and he's gotten his rhythm back. He was out of kind of out of it for a while. So having those guys back uh, it not only gave those younger guys experience for next year, which was actually a great dividend, but uh, it was it was tremendous to get these guys back and actually look at the same lineup week after week, which we haven't had the opportunity to have. I don't want to give I don't want to give too much away, but I stole something from the Lakers actually. Oh, really? uh, there's a there's a saying that I that I took about a week ago, and I read in the in, and it stuck with me before before the last game at Davis, and it was something uh, that the that Walton said, and I don't I don't I, right now it's escaping me, but he talked a little bit about um, don't let something to the effect of don't let them mi miss make them miss. And I and it was brilliant. That's when they the night that they beat the Warriors. And I used that the next day against Davis because I said, well, actually, it was that day against Davis. And I said, you know, for for us, we've got to be better defensively. So I thought we bent a little bit tonight, a little bit more than we should have. Um, we decided either we're going to give up space inside or outside, and we gave up more space outside tonight. 
And so we gave them more service, which was a given, but uh, we knew that we'd be more organized inside. And so that's kind of what we focused on. You know, and without giving too much away what we did inside, it, I think that's really the difference. It's just better defending. Don't give them a great shot. And if they do get a great shot, it better be the shot of their life. So. The other semifinals are currently tied 2-2. Two -two. Do you have a team that you'd rather face in the final? <laughs> it doesn't matter. We just want to play. We just want to keep playing. These guys are it's just a fun group to be around. And, um, you know, um, I don't know how it works. I don't know with the conference if, if who wins, who gets home, who gets away. I'm not sure if it's head to head or that, but uh, that would be interesting to find out. You know, that might make a decision for my. That's I would tell you then. <laughs> Either way, yeah, okay. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's in penalties right now. So All right, so we uh, I heard from George Kuntz there and uh, his team moving on. Do want to correct a couple of things here. The goal, the second goal was for Fullerton was Ross McPhee, not Coronado. They had announced Coronado over the uh, public address system, and we sit across from the press box here. So our apologies to Ross. That was his third of the season. Uh, Ray uh, DeWart scored for Fullerton in the ninth minute, and then Kevin Feucht scored in the 64th. Uh, as far as the other report I got from the Northridge Sac State game, uh, that was from a previous game that they had played. That was an incorrect report. Uh, that match is now going to penalty kicks. Uh, I'm sure they're done right now at Northridge. Uh, so my mistake there, Northridge has not advanced as of yet, uh, as far as we know. So um, that's uh, Northridge and Sac State. If Northridge wins, then Northridge will uh, host Fullerton on Saturday. If Sac State wins, then I'm not sure how that works because both teams finished uh, second in their respective uh, divisions. So uh, you have to look back head-to-head, -head, I assume, or something like that. But uh, uh, that one going to PKs, nothing, nothing at Northridge. And so now we head back downstairs. The Gauchos, uh, I see Tim Von Stieg uh, getting ready, so we'll go to Tim now. Thanks. All right, so we have head coach Tim Von Stieg. Uh, Tim is going to open with a statement, and then we'll go ahead with questions. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's not a whole lot to say. We uh, we, we picked kind of a bad night not to play well. Um, the game, for whatever reason, was flat from the very start. Uh, didn't have the energy. Didn't have the <clears throat> you know. It just atmosphere wasn't there. It just it just didn't feel great um, for whatever reason. Uh, again, I'm I'm fairly critical of our current format, which. I think it's pretty well known. I think the 10 days off was obviously wasn't great for us um, because you just kind of wait around for your game. And then unfortunately, of course, last night we, you know, kind of a fluke injury, but we lost our goalie. Um, so, I mean, I thought Burke, again, a couple of things could have been done differently, but you never know. Um, it, it changes a lot of things in terms of, you know, how you cover, how you mark, your communication. Obviously, Tetuan's played every single game all year except for the Davis game. So I, I, didn't, I didn't think that was a very good positive vibe going into the game. Um, but beyond that, we just, we just did not play well enough. And, uh, and if you're not playing well, uh, if you at least defend and don't make mistakes, you can hopefully get yourself back in the game. Um, and I thought we came out in the second half. We screamed and yelled a little bit at halftime. We got going a little bit. Uh, I thought we came out with, with some, some energy in the second half. And then, you know, we made another mistake in the back. Um, we fought, uh, as this team has done all year. Uh, we got the goal back. And then I thought, again, we've, we had, again, enough looks to try to 
uh, tie that game and obviously give us a chance in, in overtime to do something. Um, so, you, you know, it's it's um, it's interesting to me because I, I do think that your success that happens during the season carries into the playoffs. The problems that you have uh, during the season also carry into the playoffs. And uh, we had trouble, uh, particularly late in the year. Um, I mean, we had trouble all season um, getting Nick the quality services that that you know we would hope for. Um, and then I think when you look back on the whole season, uh, Nick I think pressed a little bit. Um, and uh, and tonight we just did not have much going on. You know, again I, I you know I don't want to say that Fullerton did anything that we didn't know they were going to do. It's a four-two-three-one. They were there. They were back on defense. Uh, they countered. Um, they can hit some good balls in your box. And uh, so I, I don't think there was anything special Fullerton did. Um, they're a solid team. They're where they're supposed to be. Uh, and, and you have to just go out and play better. And, and we did not do that tonight. You know, the first half, was it more, I mean, when they had three shots and nine goal, was it more the not, not connecting on passes or was it more they were just, more yeah, I mean, uh, again, we uh, what jumps at me about the first half was the number of balls that we did not get to, especially in midfield. So every single time the ball was played up, um, and I have to be honest with you, I, I, I played the game last year we played. And ironically, when you look at last year's game in that championship, uh, we had three shots in the first three minutes and two corner kicks. Uh, we won every head ball. We won every second ball. Uh, we jumped all over them. We were we were excited to play. We were we were fired up. Uh, and and again, I look at last year's game as probably one of the the best games UCSB's played in in several years uh, in that championship game. So compare that game to tonight. Uh, ball goes up. We don't necessarily get on the first ball. Um, we don't have enough players around the ball. Uh, we're slow to step out. Uh, they end up getting three or four shots at the top of the 18-yard box. Uh, for some reason, we, we dropped off, again, way deep in the 18-yard box on set pieces, even though we know that three or four of their players are hanging out at the top just looking for a shot. So we just, we just were, not, we were not there. And, and you know, again, um, I don't think there's a magic formula. We, we gave the guys a couple days off. Um, we, we tried to keep things fresh. Um, I thought we had a really good practice, you know, Sunday night. So I, I don't know if that was any indication. You know, I thought we were pretty good. Um, but again, when you, when you boil it down, um, we, we just did not get a very good performance from several players. And it just kind of added it on. And as I said, uh, Mark, you know, if you, if you get into halftime 0-0, and you say, hey, man, that was a bad half, but here we go. And, and you come back out in the second half. But this is a team that when we don't play well, we end up making a mistake, and then we get punished. And next thing you know, we're, we're fighting. I mean, we've been down in a lot of games all year, fighting, fighting, fighting. Um, and I also think maybe the cumulative effect of, what, seven, eight overtime games in the last 11 games, um, you know, a really grueling conference season um, where – you know, every game, uh, there was only one game this year that we actually took a two-goal lead out of our 10 wins. I mean, it's really unbelievable. I mean, we, we, got, we got up on San Diego. That was it. Every single game was a one-goal margin, and it had to be played all the way through. Um, that's, 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 a, that's a long season, and, and ultimately it, it catches up to you, I think. Did it, is it fight there kind of, you know, midway through the second half? Yeah, and and I look at you know, and I look at Noah with that head ball, you know that that's right there. It's six yards out. You know, keeper kind of start. You know, he just there it, it was there. You know, to tie the game up, and then we're having a different conversation right now. Um, but as I said, it you know we we just we just sort of um, again I, I go back to. <clears throat> We, we didn't get to enough balls tonight. Uh, we weren't on our front foot tonight. 
um, and like everything else, we we've we've got a long off season to you know to look at that. Um, I I do think that uh, you know um, we we discussed this all year. Uh, this is probably the first UCSB team in, in some time, uh, especially when we lost um, Jonah and and we lost Cody. Um, we we absolutely had no wide play on either side. Uh, we really didn't. So if you look back at all of our great players, whether it's uh, Garza or you know whether I mean pick your player, you know what I mean where you know we had wide play last year. We had Jeff and Ish, you know Ish, you know that could that could beat you on either side. Uh, we've always had excellent wide play. And, and maybe on certain years, it's not on both sides, it's just one side. And, and if you look at uh, teams could sit in, teams could drop in with numbers. Uh, they didn't feel like they had to bring two players out to us. Uh, and, and obviously, it, it, makes it makes it tough um, when you can't beat around people. So what's interesting is that Noah gave that a little bit tonight. You know, the, the, the one time he turned the corner on us, one time he broke in, um, here, here comes a goal. And, and, you know, I, I, you'd have to look back again over the past even five, six, seven, or ten games, uh, the number of times that we got around corners um, are, are, you know, on one hand. And, uh, and it's a tough way to go because if all your goals have to come with combination play through the middle of your field, um, that's tough. Um, one, one other, you know, again, I, you know, Nick DePue has had a great four years, three-time All-Big West, uh, attack, you know, forward. Um, Kevin obviously was midfielder of the year this year. Um, you know, I do think that uh, you know the one player that really kind of drove our team um, and made so much happen for us was Josue. And and uh, you know, it's obviously he's he's had a great couple years. Wish we, he'd have come here as a freshman, but we, we took you know we could get, which was two years. Um, but I do think that uh, you know when we had that tackle up at Cal Poly. Uh, where he broke in and, and uh, I don't know who fouled him from behind. It was a really bad foul. Um, and, and so from there, he's been playing the rest of the year with this knee. And, and you know, tonight, once again, you kind of see it tonight where, you know, he's giving you what he can. It's just not, it's just not 100%. And so I, I thought, you know, at the point of the year where Josue started to slow down, offensively we really started to slow down. Uh, because he was the one player that could kind of get us through the midfield, could get the ball out wide. Um, and, uh, again, we can look back on a lot of different components of it, but I do think that when he kind of started slowing down, um, you know, it, a lot of our attack went with him. Ryan, you have any questions? All right, thanks, Dave. All right, thank you. All right, so Tim Von Steeg with his comments there. Uh, Tim mentioning, of course, the great Nick DePew, the three-time Big West Conference Offensive Player of the Year, won his third straight this season. Uh, Nick uh, has said goodbye to his great gaucho career, and we wish him the absolute best as, as a pro, no doubt. Uh, and we hope he does uh, great things on the pro level. He certainly deserves it. Josue Espana, another great senior. And uh, as you heard Tim mention, the great playmaker Josue Espana was all season long. Andy Perez, uh, another senior for the Gauchos. Uh, Josue Salgado and R Riley Peterson. Peterson didn't play as much as Salgado, but Salgado's a great story because he's been on the Gauchos for a few years now. And just this year was given the opportunity to play and did very, very well and earned a starting job. And Andy Perez, what more can you say about him? Just a uh, terrific competitor, terrific defender. And so those those guys are definitely going to be missed, no question about it. And uh, Tim is very disappointed um, at the outcome, obviously, tonight. But you heard him say it's kind of what Mark and I were talking about throughout the broadcast is uh, you have to give credit where credit is due. Cal State Fullerton just outplayed the Gauchos tonight, plain and simple. Just uh, uh, had a better performance. And congratulations to George Kuntz and his team and to, uh, uh, to uh, the Titans as they move on. And again, the goals by uh, Ray uh, 
DeWart. That was in the ninth minute, and that was a 25-yard shot from straight away. The Gauchos just did not. They backed off defensively. The back line didn't pick him up, and he had a shot from right in the middle of the park, and he beat uh, Brandon Burke, made it one to nothing, and then uh, Ross McPhee in the 50th minute off the assist from Robert Coronado. They gave Coronado the assist, and... Uh, and uh, my, again, my apologies, because I had had Coronado on that goal from what I heard over the public address system, um, but it was actually McPhee on the goal and Coronado on the assist. And that came on a Gaucho uh, turnover in the back. And uh, then Noah Billingsley made a great run right side of the 18-yard box to serve it in, served it, and actually served it trying to get a Hinga Salamani on the other end of it. And it eventually got to Kevin Foish and Foish buried it with his right foot in the 64th minute, and that was it. And uh, so the uh, that made for the final 2-1. to one. Cal State Fullerton outshot UCSB 12-8. to eight. Fullerton had nine corner kicks to seven for the Gauchos. Fifteen fouls whistled against Fullerton, 11 against the Gauchos. Brandon Burke made one save. David Elias uh, did not make any saves, so the only shot on goal for the Gauchos came on Kevin Foish, the 11th goal of the season. So of UCSB's eight, shot, eight shots, only one on frame. And that was a huge difference. I mean, the credit goes to the uh, Titans defense. They were just fantastic. Uh, Mike uh, updated me. We found out what uh, Mike back at the news press. Uh, thank you to uh, Mike McKean for his efforts tonight. We found out what happened earlier. Uh, Mike had gone to the Cal State Northridge website trying to help us out, and they had had on the uh, main page a one to nothing final over Sac State, but as it turned out, that was from the regular season match, and uh, and that's what surprised me because I thought you know Northridge has lights, so why wouldn't they be playing this game at night? And uh, in fact, uh, Cal State Northridge had that on their website as a one to nothing final, uh, leading people to believe, I guess, that it, the match had already been played, <laughs> and it uh, it was not. But it now has gone final, and Northridge is into the championship match as they beat Sac State on penalty kicks, 6-5, to five, um, the final score on penalty kicks. And, uh, and so that, uh, uh, that will do it. Uh, Terry Davila's uh, side will host Cal State Fullerton on Saturday, Saturday night uh, in the Big West Conference Tournament Championship game. The winner goes on to the NCAA Tournament, and the loser uh, will go home like the Gauchos tonight because the Big West Conference simply... Uh, RPI-wise, power rankings is what RPI really is, ratings percentage index. The Big West Conference is not strong enough uh, to send any teams to the uh, tournament as at-large teams. At least that is what Coach Von Stieg believes. The Gauchos certainly um, are, um, are out after losing tonight and Fullerton's RPI um, and Northridge's RPI, for that matter, just not strong enough to get them in as at-large uh, teams if they don't win uh, if one of those teams obviously is not going to win Saturday night, and that team will probably be uh, out of the NCAA tournament as well. So while it's not for sure, it's 99% for sure. So that'll do it. The Gauchos lose it 2-1 uh, to one here. And again, uh, George Kuntz gets the better of Tim Vom Stieg in the postseason. Kuntz now 5-0 and oh against Tim Vom Stieg in the uh, postseason. Um, and the Titans did tonight what they did last season. They came in here in this tournament and beat the Gauchos. They beat them last year one to nothing in the Big West Conference Tournament Championship game. But last season, of course, the Gauchos received an at-large berth to the NCAA Tournament and were a number 15 seed and hosted South Carolina in a first-round game here. This year, George Kuntz's 2-1 to one victory over the uh, Gauchos will send the Gauchos home and Fullerton into the Big West Championship uh, game on Saturday night. So congratulations again to Fullerton. That will do it. Uh, big thanks to Eddie Epperson, our director, and Greg Kim, um, and camera operator, uh, also Danielle uh, operating the camera, and uh, Tor, wonderful job by, by all of those people. Uh, my thanks to them. Our next Gaucho broadcast here uh, with the Big West Conference and UCSB will be on the basketball court on Saturday when the UCSB men will host Nebraska Omaha Tip-off is at 2 o'clock. Don Ford and I will have the broadcast beginning at 1.45. So that'll do it. The final score here, 
UCSB loses to Fullerton 2-1. To Fullerton improves to 10-8-4. and four. The Gauchos finish their season 10-7-3. I'm Jerry Paul saying so long from Harder Stadium.